I think that that should go into sentencing is really what I would would say as opposed to anything else. So okay. in the case of uh, blinding a guy and uh, whacking and uh, cracking a dude's head open over uh, a case of beer, maybe three months seems like, you know, not the worst sentence in the world. Seems kind of light. Yep, I've se- I've seen people in for worse, in in for longer for doing more less. Now, of course, it's, we should point out. Well, you were in for uh, eight and a half years for not actually committing a murder that you were accused of. Committing. I was uh, in in the location uh, where a murder occurred. I did attack the man. Had no uh, n- no knowledge that what was going to happen to him. Or, mm-hmm. um, in, you did in not the future. D- deliver the final blow to the man. I had no intention. I was trying to protect my friend. I had no idea. You know, like, to me, it was a protection situation. But nonetheless. Uh, I t- told a bunch of lies to the police, which probably shouldn't have talked to the police before I t- uh, spoke to an attorney. Mm. And I um, and you drove the guy to the airport. Yeah, right? drove the. Well, I mean, if a murderer tells you to drive him to the airport, you probably <laughs> should do that. Um, nonetheless, his uh, his past isn't hasn't barred Wahlberg uh, as Marky Mark from a platinum single or from Times Square beefcake billboards, nor from becoming an actor praised for his work in Boogie Nights. Um, the Departed, or other films. Wahlberg, now 43, is one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, and his company has produced popular TV shows such as Entourage and Boardwalk Empire. Oh, good show. Yep. Um, by the way, he on that sentence, that three-month sentence, he only served 45 days, if that matters wow, to okay. anybody. About half. That, that was par for the course back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, the reason that I took the plea bargain that I did was because... Every month that I stayed in prison was going to be another five months I had to do. Um, I would lose out on getting as far as gain, gain time, and I didn't want to miss out on that. So I went and took a plea bargain based on sort of false premises of uh, gain time as it was being given out um, at the time. I'm not mm-hmm. blaming that, but that's, you know, it, it was a part of the decision-making factor for me. So uh, let's see. Um, Here's the uh, part of what he's saying to the uh, Massachusetts governor uh, as far as his conviction. So why am I seeking a pardon? Why isn't it enough that I have uh, personally risen above my past, found success in Hollywood, and have served as a local and national philanthropist, and am the father of four beautiful children with my incredible wife, whatever her name is, it's blacked out here. The easiest answer is that my past convictions still legally impact me to this day. For example... My prior record can potentially be the basis to deny me a concessionaire's license in California and elsewhere. If I were to receive a pardon, however, I generally could not be denied a concessionaire's license on the basis of my prior record, an important consideration given my personal involvement in various restaurant ventures. In addition, I've become close with many members of the local law enforcement community in Boston and Los Angeles, including... As a member of the board of directors of the L.A. County uh, Sheriff's Youth Foundation, which is uh, dedicated to helping at-risk youth. But given my prior record, Massachusetts and California's law prohibit me from actually obtaining positions in law enforcement. If I were fortunate enough to receive a pardon, I would have the ability to become more active in law enforcement activities, including those that assist at-risk individuals. The article says, Wahlberg shouldn't get a pardon. Where is this written? Quartz. Uh, that's QZ.com. Okay. QZ.com. I'm not familiar with the site. So. Not because his crimes are so heinous, though they certainly were. And the two assaults in 1988 weren't even the extent of them. The smoking gun reports a 15-year-old Wahlberg, a year before, I guess, and two friends attacked a group of black school children hollering the N-word at them. In uh, 1993, he and a friend, this is significantly later, that's four mm-hmm. years later, battered right. a man so severely that the man's jaw had to be wired shut. And not just because people sure. seldom get pardons. Even for the 25-year-old crimes. You didn't get yours. I didn't get one. No, I went back to get a uh, pardon from uh, Charlie the, Crist. The Florida governor. Yeah, Florida governor of the Florida at the time, and he wouldn't give me one. Apparently, I was too dangerous to vote in Florida. Even though, you know, you're in your 40s at the time you were late, th- what, late 30s? Something like that. Uh, you you know, you had a wife, you had just had a kid, I think, yep. or, or had one Even on though the that guy did a lot to get other uh, felons their ability to vote. And he could have, by the way, not didn't have to give me a full pardon. He could have given me anything, like a conditional pardon, uh, certain rights restored, whatever he wanted to do. Just chose to do nothing. All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. 855, 450 free. Should Wahlberg or other felons get pardons? It's free talk live. 
Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's Floor Buster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more Floor Buster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. These deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, December 1st, 2014, gold opened at 1195.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1239.50, 61975 for a half ounce, or 30988 for a quarter ounce. That's 1239.50, 61975, and 30988. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase and there's no end to this madness that old 401k and ira can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences i explained this in my book 10 reasons to buy gold don't let time slip away call for your free copy today 800-686-2237 get away from that washington spin and get honest answers about gold 800-686-2237 the book is free 800-686-2237 Free Talk Live. For me, it's, um, it's, it's, it's fighting negativity, and the negativity is my thoughts in my head that are negative. And I had to re- learn to recognize when my thoughts were being negative, because most of my life, my, most of my thoughts were negative. Mm-hmm. So I had, to, I had to become aware of when they were happening. And when I, and when now, when I become aware of, of these negative thoughts of pervading my, 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 my thinking, um, I, I immediately fight them with positive thoughts. And most of the positive thoughts that I feed myself are positive reaffirmations about who I am, where I'm going, where I've come from. Uh, whenever I find myself thinking negatively, I, I don't consider it fighting the negative thoughts. I just consider it changing my train of thought. I just kind of change tracks to a positive thought and just focus on that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the latest on North Korea and how it ties into... Sony Motion Pictures. Hmm. This was an interesting, uh, unexpected thing that I just came across. We'll get into that. But first, uh, other movie-related news. Mark Wahlberg, a.k.a. Marky Mark, is seeking a pardon 
And we'll talk about pardons here in a moment. Uh, Mark is uh, in our a different Mark. This Mark Edge, Mark Edge is, yes. uh, is in our studio. Marky Mark is not on the show, uh, but uh, Mark Edge is here, and he is uh, has some experience with this whole pardon thing, having sought one yourself and also failed at. Uh, or I guess Marky Mark hasn't had a decision yet. Has right? not Mark failed. Palmer. He's significantly more famous than I am, and I yeah. suspect he'll probably get his. Um, he also has uh, more run of the mill uh, politics, political beliefs than uh, than I do. So. So that we'll continue could, that, that, could be difficult. that story here in moments. But first, I want to tell you about In Freedom's Cause at InFreedomsCause.com. It's uh, an audio adventure. It's about two hours long, uh, maybe a bit longer than that. And there's actually some more uh, footage and that sort of thing that you can get with, depending on the package that you get. But it's really great. It's uh, probably the best piece of audio theater I've ever heard. It's like they just ripped a mu movie soundtrack and uh, you know made it available to you. It's, it's really incredible. I think it's the gift, the gift for freedom lovers this year because it's the story of William Wallace. And that really is one of the foundational stories that... Uh, you know the the struggle for liberty has um, Scottish independence, and it's it's in, incredible. It's well done with uh, Joanne Froggett of Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of uh, Lord of the Rings, James Cosmo of Braveheart, Skandar Keynes of Chronicle of Narnia. It's called In Freedom's Cause, and it's um, of William Wallace, as I had said, and Robert the Bruce. For those of uh, the history buffs out there that know the the relationship between those two, if you get the uh, audio. Uh, CD, you will know the relationship between them because it's historically accurate. It's like Braveheart, except that it's historically accurate. And I think that that's a uh, that m makes it even um, you know more exciting because you'll walk away knowing what happened, and the kids in your life will love it too. It has a study guide, and uh, you know it's a real crash course in the struggle for freedom. If you love the ideas of liberty and you have kids in your life, be they your kids or you know maybe nephews or nieces or somebody else's, a good friend's kids, this is a great choice for them. You can go get the family four-pack uh, for half price because we have a special offer just for Free Talk Live listeners. Use coupon code FTL, and uh, when you buy the family four-pack, you'll get 50% off. And that's four gifts for the you know price of one, basically. Uh, just go to InFreedomsCause.com and use coupon code FTL. InFreedomsCause.com, coupon code FTL. All right, so we're talking about pardoning, and you know, under what circumstances should a pardon be issued? Uh, in the case of Mark Wahlberg, aka Marky Mark, the uh, the international film star, former rap producer character, uh, he is seeking a pardon for some pretty horrendous crimes from back in the 1980s when he was a teenager in the late 80s, uh, involving serious damage to individuals who appear to have been targeted for random purposes of just the you know just the fact of wanting to hurt somebody um, and so he's seeking the pardon in Massachusetts which is where he sure. was originally where else would you seek it? where he was originally arrested for these things and it would probably be a lot easier to get a pardon in a different state where you didn't uh, commit the crime but that you have to do it in the state where you committed obviously. the crime obviously um, i was just relaying the information that this happened in Massachusetts and so he was speaking to uh, the governor i guess it was what, there was some sort of well, letter or yeah, you have to fill out this form okay. and uh, in it he sort of uh, points out that hey you know this happened a long time ago and this is preventing me he's in his 40s it's now. make it more difficult to get uh, like a concessionaire's license to open a restaurant Hmm. And I um, QZ.com says that he shouldn't get a pardon. And it's not because his crimes are so heinous, though they certainly were. Um, and it's not because people seldom get pardons, even for 25-year-old crimes. If the Massachusetts governor-elect Charlie Baker and the governor's council pardon him, it'd likely be because of his celebrity and not mm -hmm. his contrition. And what I think is kind of interesting is he's trying to get a pardon for crimes that he's already served whatever time there is for. You know, when you hear about pardons, you're usually hearing about people who are in prison trying to get out of whatever their punishment is. But I and Mark Wahlberg, um, we, we're go I went for a pardon for afterwards. Like, I was on no uh, probation, no nothing. We're just talking about a pardon for the crime so that you can, in my case, I wanted to be able to vote. And it'd really be nice to have a twenty two rifle to take care of, like, raccoons and stuff at my house. Mm. I have an air rifle, um, you know, and— I, that's legal. Yeah, that's legal. Okay. I, you know, I managed to to sort of work around that to some extent. But you know, what if there's a deer in the uh, my wife's very sizable garden? You know, you, what are you going to shoot in the butt with a uh, with a air rifle? Those you things just, get up early. You could yell at it. Yeah. Shoot deer! Ah! Shoot! Chase it with a rake. So 
I, you know, I mean, I don't know whether I don't even know if I would buy a gun. Mm-hmm. If I could, but it'd be nice to be able to not ha- like go to Canada, for instance. I can't go to Canada. Um, I don't know how Mark Wahlberg gets around that particularly. Hmm. So, you know, there's some things I can't do. I can't vote in several states. It'd be nice if I decided to move to some other state to, I don't know, be able to have some representation while I'm being taxed, like they fought a revolutionary war over in this country. Okay, I, well, I appreciate the editorializing. I'm still curious to know why this QZ website doesn't think he should get the pardon. They he haven't says, really explained that. It's not even because at the time when so many white men seemed to be above the law, I don't know about this, or uh, when it comes to violence against non-whites, pardoning Wahlberg would send a message that whites can, can do wrong with impunity. I don't that's, know if that's what it would send. That but... seems nonsensical to me, but whatever. I would should, hope that it how would... is this a race issue at all? Well, I, that's ridiculous. Because QZ right? decides it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty ridiculous. But I think that if it, if it did send a message, it would say that, well, probably that if you're a celebrity, you can get a pardon. That's probably the most likely message. I would think that, that, would that that's send. the message that it's likely to send. Yeah. He should not be pardoned because instead of pardoning him, state and federal governments should ease laws that prevent convicted felons like him from fully being fully functional participate p- participants in society. Can't they do both? Sure. Sure. They won't do do either, though, likely. So um, what would likely be the case, uh, the reason I would support him getting the pardon is is because this has to, they're basically asking all 50 states in the federal government to do something which can't be done in a decade, Um, not uh, plausibly. But I understand the point they're making. Uh, that let past conv- convictions for felons have already punished, uh, been punished, continue, continue to uh, legally impact them, as Alt Wahlberg put it, for the rest of their lives. These laws bar ex-offenders from a whole host of things, from opening a restaurant or obtaining public housing to being eligible for student financial aid. Uh, I'd also point out that the Second Amendment says that uh, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. But if you've been convicted of a felony, you can't, co- you can't own a gun. And that sounds like an infringement. I'm not going to say it's unconstitutional because I believe that the 13th Amendment would allow for it. But that's you know, really beside the point. Well, good for Mark Wahlberg for standing up for these issues, because I doubt he really wants to start a restaurant. I think he's probably concerned about other people who are affected by this law, right? I don't know what Mark Wahlberg's is doing to stand up for anything. Here. But he's uh, at least uh, bringing attention to the issue, he's right? He's filed for a pardon is all he's done. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, how? Did, well, wait. I mean, somebody found out about this, right? Sure. Like, did he put out a press release? Or, I mean, how, how, did, how would anyone in the media find out, just happen to come across, that Mark Wahlberg has filed for a pardon? I, I would imagine most of these things are open for the, the public. I would, um, it could be, it'd be, if you were the person that handles pardons, and there's a bunch of people who do, uh, you see Mark Wahlberg's name come across your desk. You think <laughs> you they might, leaked it? They could. He huh. might have put out a press release, too. I don't know. Well, yeah, we'll come back with more here in a moment. It's 855-450 free. It said that earlier that he does have some investments in restaurants, it sounded like. So he seems like he's one of those actors who's into that. You know, a lot of times people get a lot of money and they, no, oh, let's open a restaurant. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up here, 855-450 free. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionist, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. 
if Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. A man age 50 non-tobacco user may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the term lifeline now. 800-872-0403 This is the Liberty Radio Network broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM It's Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free to take control of the airwaves and bring up anything that you would like. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Free Talk Live returns to Austin in March for the second Texas Bitcoin conference. This time it's the Moody Theater. I think that's going to be really exciting. It's going to be loaded with the best and brightest speakers in the Bitcoin sphere, not to mention some great vendors and exhibitors. It's, uh, th I think, the biggest and, and most exciting thing about it. The most exciting thing about the Texas Bitcoin conference compared to every other conference everywhere is the Million Dollar Bitcoin 2.0 Hackathon. This is what makes the Texas Bitcoin Conference the, in my opinion, the premier conference. If you're going to go to a Bitcoin conference, I think this is the one to go to because this hackathon is really exciting. What we get to find out is, is that all the new ideas that are coming in behind Bitcoin, you know, the proclamations of Bitcoin's death have been uh, numerous and uh, wide-spanning. But the reason that I think that Bitcoin and the blockchain technology is going to continue on is, is momentum. There are a lot of really smart people in this sphere creating uh, new and interesting technologies. And uh, those technologies, many of them are going to be trotted out at the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference. This is essentially the shark tank of the Bitcoin world. And I think it's going to be great. March the 28th and 29th with a kickoff event on the 27th. They're actually doing a white paper call right now if you're interested in that. Get a hold of them, texasbitcoinconference.com, and you can uh, see all the different ways you can be in involved. If you go there and you sign up for the event, that'd be great. We're going to be there. We'd love to see you. Come say hi. Uh, it's $125 after you use coupon code FTL. Um, that's uh, it, You can also use Free Talk Live, all one word. In either case, it should work. But as I understand it, the coupon code FTL is up and running. Um, 
it's confirmed as of last week. So there you go. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Coupon code FTL to save $25 off your ticket. Please come see us. We're talking about pardons and how difficult it is to achieve such a thing. Mark, you failed in your efforts down in Florida, and you've turned your life around by all factors uh, from what you did back when you were a teenager. There's hanging out with you. <laughs> well, they didn't know about that part. You don't think? I don't know. Really? Think so. You think that the governor's office... Uh, that's, How much research are they really doing? I don't know the answer to that. I think that's an interesting question. These are bureaucrats. But, but I think that uh, I, they are bureaucrats, but they don't deal with very many pardons. Oh, really? Um, you know, most of them are just, nope, 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 right? Um, but somebody does the research. Now, you actually appeared in front of the governor person, right? Yeah, I went down there for it. I was told that You it was traveled from New Hampshire. Unlikely that I would Florida. get it. I flew down to Florida. Yep. I, was, I was told I was unlikely I would get it, but I wanted to, you know, if I'm going to put in for a pardon, I'm going to take the time and the money to uh, do that. I'm going to take the time and the money to follow up How on How often it. can you do it? Can you, like, do it once a year? I think or? it's every 10 years. Oh, wow. What did you wear? A suit. All right, very good. What color? Good. <laughs> well, I believe it's that suit that I gave you. Actually, it's blue with a uh, with white with light white pinstriping. But oh, okay. uh, it's been some time. So so it uh, didn't work out for you though. No. And uh, and it may or may not work out for Mark Wahlberg, who has uh, attempted to do so. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. We've also got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. Howard is uh, on the line, a.k.a. Howie in Philadelphia. Howie, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, fellas. Hey there. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I was. There's a word for that where you can get, like, expunged, I think they call it, where they'll take a, a charge off of your record. And it's not uncommon that people will get in trouble as a teenager or, or a young person, and then they stay out of trouble for the rest of their lives, and then, you know, they don't need it on their record because it does hold you back because even just getting arrested once, and even if you don't get charges or convicted, that arrest that arrest will show up like any time you go to buy a firearm or something. It's on the record, and I guess it holds a lot of people back from their careers. My thinking about Mark is I'm, I bet you he wants to be a politician. Which Mark? That's the one in the studio thing. or Mark, Mark Wahlberg? Wahlberg. No, I think I you're mean, right Wahlberg. on both sides. You can still be a politician as a felon. Yeah, but I think his, his, he'll have a far better chance, I think. And I think Hello? that's his motivation. Also that, you know, if it wasn't the past, I don't blame him. And, and I can understand, like we were talking about, me and Derek were chatting or something. And I think I was just listening to Derek's show and I mentioned that I really appreciate how Mark has changed his life around. Like, I mean, I would never think I don't think it's the right thing to subject a person to prison to try to think that's going to solve anyone's problems, even if they are like having difficulties in life. I just don't think subjecting a person to the legal system and stabbing and rape, especially like if it's just something for like a, a helpful plant. Well, in the know. case of uh, Mark Wahlberg, he actually did physically attack and and pretty seriously injure. Uh, some individuals, but uh, you know, I think we didn't really po we didn't really focus on this earlier in the discussion. I think it's important to point out the typical kind of liberty-oriented view on this is that him sitting in prison for three months, six months, a year, three years, however long the arbitrary sentence would be, doesn't actually do anything to make the victims whole. It yeah, I think that's actually, important to point out. It doesn't actually provide anything to the family or to the individual who was damaged to you know help them pay for the hospital bills and pay for the time and the and the difficulty and the lost work and all of that. You know, it that's uh, that's the real loss here. Sitting in a in a prison cell is not fixing things. I wonder, because we did speculate on whether or not he's uh, tried to make good with the victims, and but, you know, it's it's kind of a tough situation to deal with. Like, for instance, uh, I, I took a class in prison about sort of uh, this, this very thing. Like, what do you do to make good for what you've done? And what the basic premise of it, it was is if the person's not in your immediate family or immediate circle of, uh, of, of influence, that you should probably just leave them alone hey mark i don't not to interrupt you but i was i've been in like a 12-step program and in the fast and part of that thing is making amends and a right. lot of times the best thing is not to do anything because you don't want to you want to make amends but you don't want to do it where it's going to harm another person and sometimes it's best that you don't say anything because it might make you feel better to to be honest but in the long run you're just 
bringing up things that are going to hurt other people. It's a whole different thing, but this is a great topic, and I just wanted to share my thoughts about it. Thanks, but, Howie. I appreciate your thanks. call tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Well, I would hope that the wishes of the victim or the family, if the victim's dead, uh, that the wishes of those folks would be primary, right? So, like, you know, if they want to receive a check every month, then you're they talking, should be able to do that. You're talking about the fant- fantasy world of Libertopia where people make yeah. good. Well, I'm talking about the real world today. Yeah, but the real world today, he could still apologize to the family and he offer could. the money. Well, right, right, but I can understand saying that, oh, well, the family doesn't want to dredge up the old feelings and the old you know, situation, that that's been long since buried. Uh, which is why I was saying in an ideal world, then the family, I think, th- it should be their opinion that comes into a fairly high play in in the court or the arbitrator or whatever. Where, I, th- I know, think that's true. If, you know, well, is it worth this check every, is getting a check every month from the perpetrator, is getting that, whatever the arbitrary amount might be that is, you know, on that check, is it worth it? Whatever that amount is, is it worth it to have to have, to have to think about that on a monthly basis? Uh, whenever you receive that check, you're going to know, oh, well, this is from, you know, the guy who uh, assaulted my family or, you know, hurt my baby or whatever it was. Um, and I think that that should be the family that decides that. Some would say, yes, it's worth it. Others would say, no, it's not. Right. Which is why I think it should be up to them. Right. And in, in my case, I've uh, written an open letter. Um, I posted it up on our BBS at mm-hmm. some point because somebody claiming to be, I suspect I was dealing with a troll, a specific troll, yeah. claiming to be the uh, the, the, the victim um, got a hold of me. The so victim's I, family because the victim's dead. Yeah, the victim's family, yeah. um, the, the child of the victim. And, uh, you know, I so I wrote a letter to that person, then posted it up on the, the BBS. Mm-hmm. I never got any further contact, um, so I didn't really know what else to do. Good um, evidence that it was fake. Yeah, I suspect it was, yeah. but I don't know. I mean, and what did email. you offer in that in that letter? In uh, I'd offer to talk to them um, about you know uh, let's let's talk about this and like what can you do kind of thing like talk about that. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. I was I you know I stated in the letter I strongly suspect that this is from somebody from a troll um, you know from somebody who's not who they say they are, um, but. You know, if you're not a troll, then you can reach me I, here. Right? I'm happy to talk to you about this on the telephone um, or something like that. We can set something up. Let's uh, let's talk about this. I, I you know, I want to make good, but how do you do that? Well, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts with us. Coming up, we'll uh, tell you what's going on in North Korea and how it has to do somehow with Sony Motion Pictures. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. The experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and, and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. 
Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free to bring up what you want. We're talking about pardons. And coming up more, uh, we're going to talk about North Korea. It's been a while since that's been the subject of discussion. And how does it tie in with the upcoming release of a new movie, a new comedy film. We'll give you more details on that. The toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. And join us over at freetalklive.com. If you like this show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then please get your shopping done. You've got holiday season shopping. It's happening now. You've been you know, maybe waiting a little bit, waiting on some sales, whatever it is you've been thinking about doing as far as why you've been putting it off. Get it done sooner rather than later, whenever you're ready for it. Just go to shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You enter Amazon there. There's Amazon UK. We Amazon. also have Walmart there too, right? They, Walmart's there. I don't think anyone's – either no one's bought anything through the Walmart link or – They haven't sent us a check or whatever. Or the Walmart link isn't working because <laughs> we've definitely not gotten a check uh, from that. But Amazon, we do get uh, payments regularly from them because people are regularly shopping through shop.freetalklive.com and it makes a big difference for us. Usually the holiday shopping season is our biggest couple months of the year. Um, so thank you in advance for everybody who's doing their holiday shopping through shop dot freetalklive.com it's the same great amazon same great deals you're used to you're just getting uh free talk lives getting a cut of the profits from amazon because we're sending them the business so once again get your shopping started at shop.freetalklive.com mark we've been talking about uh, the story you have from qz.com yeah where they're discussing mark Wahlberg and how it is that he's seeking a pardon and sort of just a, started a larger conversation about pardons and how difficult it can be to achieve them etc Unless you're a turkey. The president pardons a turkey every, every year. year. Yeah, and I really, I want, here's the question I guess I have on this is why wouldn't you want to restore the rights of somebody who has been out of prison? Let's go ahead and pull up a random number of five years. Okay, so, I mean, all right, let's, uh, carrying a firearm, um, uh, voting, going to Canada. Uh, these are some of the things I can think of. Certain licenses that mm -hmm. they can't have. You know, I mean, if you're if you want to pass some specific law that says, I don't know, people convicted of pedophilia can't ever have a daycare license. All right, that makes sense, I suppose. Sure. But yeah. disallowing people just sort of 
as a matter of course from having certain licenses, like a real estate license. I'm under the impression that I can't have a real estate license in the state of Florida. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Didn't want a real estate license. Uh, but this is a, really, what, what kind of sense does that make? I guess politicians don't want to appear to be soft on crime. When right. they're running for election, they can't say... I want to make it easier for felons to have rights. You know what I'd That's like to not- do? I'd like to disenfranchise the most dangerous segment of society and make it so that they can't earn a living and then turn them loose on you bunch of <laughs> stupid voters. I mean, really? That's what we're talking about here? Mm-hmm. You Thank you, Mr. Politician. Thank you for making me my life more dangerous through your stupid laws and... Well, you know, I, I don't know. It gets It's so frustrating to me talking about this particular yes, your issue. your face is turning red. Because people just don't think. You should run against these people, these politicians who, who want to be hard on crime, and then you can, you can be the soft on crime guy. I, I, I would Restore never, get any, t- well, I'd I never it, get any time, TV time to talk about this. It's a news bite world. I think it makes sense for somebody like Mark to lead this charge because he yeah. can tell that personal story of, hey, this happened to me. Look at my life. I'm better now. So it can be you know the same situation can happen with uh, other felons but I, I just don't think it's as strong coming from a politician who's not a felon right so mark could absolutely get elected in new hampshire i think that's totally possible whether or not he gets elected isn't the yeah. issue i think bringing the the issues to light in front of the mainstream is the issue well he could do that more effectively by being a politician you know if he right. files a bill and then you know you put a press release out about that then there's a chance that somebody's going to pick up on, oh, my God, New Hampshire might just decriminalize being a felon or whatever you would call that. Uh, yeah. you know, it, it, Make Vote, it easier to pardon. Allow Mark Wahlberg to open a restaurant. Oh, my God. Yeah, and and the, usually even even bills that are proposed can sometimes ge- uh, you know generate controversy. They can generate discussion. So even though I'm not a huge fan of the political process, it's definitely true that when a politician puts forward something like you know medical marijuana or legalization of pot or something like that, that that usually generates some news articles. Yeah, I suppose it's uh, p- a possible. You know, I'm probably Mark Wahlberg probably thinks like I do generally. I mean, when the, he's he's run up on the situation where he wants to open restaurants, uh, you know, forward his uh, chain. What's it called? Um, it's his last name, Wahlburgers. 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 Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, he wants to you know open up some more Wahlburgers in different places, and he can't get a wet restaurant tours license because of this. I don't understand why his brother can't get it because he's uh, in with his brother. But whatever. Um, Maybe his brother's a felon too. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, if I was doing this, I'd open a business with my wife, and it'd be in her name. But uh, you Even know, a whatever. corporation or whatever. Right. Well, I don't know. Maybe a license has to be given to an individual, like Maybe. in the case yeah. of a radio um, station. If he's ever going to grow as a business, he's going to have to learn to break those laws. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I the uh, you know the the situation for me is is I don't generally confront these things on a day to day basis. I don't sit at my house and pine for the ability to legally own some kind of firearm, right? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. and carry it around with me or whatever it is. It's just not something that that bothers me. I wish I could go to Canada, but I there are pieces of paper that I could fill out to do that and. Um, my wife asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I asked her, I want you to fill out that paperwork because I hate filling out government paperwork. So, um, you know, maybe that maybe I will go to Canada sometime. But that's it. I mean, like, do I want to vote in the state of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Virginia, Iowa, uh, Wyoming? Well, no. Screw those states. I don't want to vote in them. They don't deserve me. Um, you know, I've got nothing for those states. So I, I just don't care that much. From day-to-day life, Fine, things are fine. It's just these stupid impediments that politicians have. They're like little, uh, there's, there's these little cheap gimmies as far as give me a vote. Look at this. I'm doing something bad to the convicts. You don't mm-hmm. like them, do you? And it's just ridiculous because they really make the world more dangerous. Here's why. I've got, I can't own a firearm, right? So there's, uh, if I had a firearm, do you think I'd commit a crime with it? Obviously, I wouldn't, because if I was going to commit a crime with a firearm in the last 15 or 20 years or however long it's been since I'd gotten out of prison, I would have gotten a firearm and done it. I can get a firearm in the next few minutes if that's what I want to do. And if I want to go rob a liquor store with it, then that's what I would do. And your (laughs) stupid law isn't going to stop it. So all your stupid law does is prevent felons who want to go straight from having a gun to protect their family. Yeah, That's I'd all say. you've done. So you you don't know whether there's a gun at my house or not. You have no clue. It, it's really just a dumb law that prevents me from 
I don't even know what, um, legally saying I've got a gun or something. I don't know. It's not making the world a better place for people who enjoy Wahlburgers because they want to expand, right? They can't get their license. And it's not as if Mark Wahlberg is going to hit one of his customers with a pipe and take their beer. Like, mm. that really only happens <laughs> once. And it's unrelated to him opening a restaurant. So why are the two conflated? Yeah, I'd say you nailed it, Derek J., uh, that this is definitely a political move to continue to treat felons as though they're below human uh, I like what you've pointed out, Mark, that you you know, you know go to prison, that's the punishment now. Maybe as libertarian-minded folks, we would like to see uh, the restitution system more in the future. But right now, prison's the punishment. You did your time. Shouldn't you have your full rights back after Outlawing that? Outlawing felons having firearms only causes outlaw felons to not have firearms or to, to have to firearms. Have them, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just the same thing as the old bumper sticker. If you add in the word felon, it, it your, your law doesn't, when you outlaw gun ownership, only outlaws have guns. And that's that. You're, you're driving the good folks out from having it. Well, if somebody breaks into my house and, you know, people know I'm a felon in the community, I'm open about it because I want people to understand that there's successes in the world that are, that you know, have committed crimes, have hurt people, and then now you can make your life better. But that makes you a target. Well, it, I know which house to rob. It's right, the that's exactly what the reason is. Yeah. Well, by the way, my wife is not legally disallowed from owning a firearm. Oh, okay. Uh, right. But mm. it, it can get a very to be a very touchy situation. Well, like to, you can't get in the same. You can't get closer to the gun than her, right, or something like that. You know, there's uh, been different rulings around America with different judges to sort of say what active possession is in any circumstance. I mean, there's. So uh, the answer is it depends. Is what the answer saying. is it depends. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Pete. He's in Los Angeles. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Pete. How you doing? Well, I changed the name of my blog talk radio thing to, uh, now it's not Son of the More Radio. Now it's Jihad for Justice. Now you win. I didn't even know you had a blog talk radio. We well, suggested show. he get one. He, has, he, he likes to, to chit-chat about stuff. So, Well, congratulations yeah, to I, you. Now, now my channel is uh, blogtalkradio.com forward slash J for J. So, is, uh, so our listeners can uh, tune in to hear you ramble on about... Are you on a speakerphone? Uh, yeah, I am. Okay, uh, it's awful. Also. <laughs> That's how we broadcast. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so you oh, can yeah. tune hey, in to blog talk radio slash whatever to listen to Pete ramble on Ford about hating Ford people, Ford. wanting to execute gay people, destroying all Muslims. I'm sure that's a real... You know, awesome yeah, show. Baby. Tell you what, hang on, we'll bring you back. I don't know. Maybe he's got something else besides plugging his his website. It sounds Blog a- Talk Radio is awful, and we'll see if we can get him to pick up the phone for uh, hour number two, which is coming up here eight fifty five four fifty free. We'll continue with Pugnacious Pete in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. 
You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,194 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $369. Antiwar.com reports two potential U.S. drone strikes have been reported along the Afghanistan-Pakistan border this weekend, with at least 13 people killed between them. None of them have been conclusively identified on either side of the border, but some officials are saying there is speculation an important commander might have been slain. The bigger of the two strikes on the Afghan side of the border killed nine people on Saturday. Officials claimed an insurgent commander was killed and another fighter was wounded. No one else was identified, but bizarrely, provincial officials insisted none were civilians. The second apparent strike inside Pakistan's North Waziristan agency killed four people. Pakistani intelligence officials said the house destroyed was a suspected militant hideout. Unusual for a Pakistani attack, however, the Pakistani army issued their own statement on the matter, insisting that no U.S. drone strike had taken place at all. They did not offer an alternative scenario. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports a powerful, slow-moving typhoon ripped through central Philippines on Sunday, bringing howling winds that flattened houses and toppled trees and power lines in areas still scarred from a deadly superstorm just over a year ago. In the coastal village of Dolores on Samar Island, where Typhoon Hagupit first made landfall on Saturday night, Mayor Emiliano Villacarillo said around 80% of the homes were destroyed. Villacarillo said only the big houses were left standing, adding floods also washed away rice crops in what is a key growing region. Officials confirmed at least three deaths from the typhoon, including a resident of Dolores who was killed by a falling coconut tree. The interior secretary told a radio station, the devastation in homes is huge because of the strong winds. Many people voluntarily returned to evacuation centers tonight, even more than those who fled to the centers last night because they do not have homes anymore. But the typhoon did not appear to have wreaked destruction on the same scale as last year's super typhoon, in part because of a massive operation to evacuate residents from coastal and landslide-prone areas days before the storm hit. More than 1.2 million people had crowded into over 1,500 schools, civic centers, town halls, gyms, and churches used as evacuation centers across central Philippines, according to Gwendolyn Pang, Secretary General of the Philippine Red Cross. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports, NYPD Commissioner Bill Bratton went on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday to talk about the Eric Garner killing amid days of intense unrest around the nation. He said an internal investigation into the case has begun and he hopes that the investigation is finished within four months. Bratton said, now that the criminal investigation is concluded, the administrative investigation, which focuses on violation of policies, procedures, rules, and regulations can now move forward unimpeded. Bratton said the chokehold is not 
not illegal. It's not against New York law. It's against department policy and protocol. Bratton says he's not allowed to express personal feelings on the matter while it's being investigated, but said he was disturbed by the video. The video was taken with a cell phone and depicts Officer Daniel Pantaleo approaching 43-year-old Eric Garner and bringing him to the ground, which resulted in him choking to death. He was allegedly illegally selling loose cigarettes, according to the officer. The New York City Medical Examiner's Office ruled Garner's death a homicide. A grand jury decided not to indict the officer on December 3rd, and protests have erupted across the U.S. and beyond. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sources at the video streaming service Netflix reported today that they had sent local man Shane Fowler a personal message earlier just checking to see if everything was okay after the 31-year-old watched an entire season of the FX program Sons of Anarchy in a single viewing session. Well, we happened to notice that Shane had been sitting in front of his laptop and had burned through all 13 episodes of the first season of Sons of Anarchy. So we thought maybe we could send him a note and just sort of make sure he was doing all right or if he needed someone to talk to or something. Netflix says the message, which Fowler received minutes after he finished viewing the season one finale of the motorcycle gang drama, was just a way for the company to see if there was anything they could do for their longtime subscriber. I mean, we do this stuff all the time. Just last year, Mike Ralston from Bartlesville, Oklahoma, watched all four seasons of The Tudors after his wife left him. We were there for him. We just like to check in on our customers from time to time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Join us online. Uh, go to freetalklive.com and get interactive there. You can actually create the content that you see there on the site, everything that's on the front page, those new numbered items as you scroll down were created by listeners like you. You can interact with that uh, by submitting your own content or voting on what's already there over at freetalklive.com. It's a Reddit-based system. That means it's free to you. freetalklive.com. With you in studio, you've got Ian, Derek J, and Mark. And we have Pete with us here. He's uh, on in Los Angeles. Pete is uh, talking to us tonight about he's got himself his own radio show. But Pete, uh, beyond beyond the plugs, which you already got in the last hour, uh, why would somebody want to listen to your radio show? I mean, they've heard you calling this this show a number of times. And you basically spew vitriol, anger, and hatred all over the airwaves. Is that the kind oh, of person oh, you look at? And you got to take yourself so off the speakerphone. A... you got to take yourself off the speakerphone. I'm not on the speakerphone. I'm just in a place that's echoing. Gotcha. Well, you had said you were on a speakerphone before. So go ahead. Yeah, I'm off now. Well, look, anyway, the reality is uh, anybody that's a professing uh, conservative Protestant Christian who is liberty-minded and doesn't like bull crap. You're not liberty. You're not liberty minded. Please stop fooling yourself into believing you're liberty minded. Anybody who's advocating hanging gay people and Muslims is not liberty minded. But to be liberty minded, you have to allow other people to be free. Okay, so what you're saying, you know, oh, I mean, I, uh, I seem to remember that one of the founding principles of this country was no king but King Jesus. That uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's. Liberty. I think I missed that in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Seems like an unusual thing for a deist like Thomas Jefferson or a Benjamin That's Franklin. A lie. What's a lie? <laughs> they were most of thirty-two of the original signers were, uh, were uh, Episcopalian. Most of, I mean, most of them went to some of the most prestigious English biblical-based uh, universities. Ever. Well, why do you think they you went know, to they... the biblical-based universities? It's because there really weren't any others at <laughs> yeah. the time. You know, you, you love to talk about line. Calvinists, and I want to ask you about this. Do you support oh, um, you, you, you support uh, Woodrow <clears throat> Wilson, whose dad was a Calvinist uh, pr- preacher? Do you support his actions in starting World War I? Woodrow, Will- hey, Woodrow Wilson was a traitor to this nation, and he should have been hung. You um, know, he you what know, about Woodrow- the Calvinists that were hanging the Quakers and uh, drawing them behind carts and that sort of thing. I mean, Calvinists have a really long history of using the lash to uh, to get what they want, and that's not very liberty-minded, is it? Well, let me tell you something. See, it's all about their actions. Jesus said, you know, them by their fruit. So there are more absolutes. Right. Love, say, joy, peace. Uh, you know, you don't have any of those. So from what I can tell, you're not a Christian. 
I am absolutely kindness, but I'm, I'm not, goodness, I'm not a faithfulness, self control. Thanks for the call, Pete. <laughs> Toll free number 855 450 free. Yeah. Uh, I like what you're saying there, Mark, about what was that? Can you go over that again? Kindness? The, the fruits of the Spirit? Yeah, he was yeah. rambling on there. Well, the fruits of the Spirit are, uh, the, the idea is is that you don't need to tell people about your faith as much as you need to show them. To set and, an example. Yeah, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Mm. I, I might have some things wrong there, but I'm doing my best. So like advocating putting people to death for their beliefs or sexual orientation, not those things. Right. So when you hear a Christian who doesn't sound... Uh, you know, like they're peaceful, loving, joyous, uh, you know, have self-control, uh, they're kind and good. And That's a hint. They yeah, might not be a Christian. The, like the, the chances are that they aren't a Christian, that they are, in fact, a Pharisee. When I was a Christian, we used to sing this song in church called, They Will Know We Are Christians By Our Love. Yeah, yeah I know that, that song. That's yeah, kind that of was, the basis of it. That was cute, but I also found it kind of offensive because I went to a school that had lots of different religions and thought, you know, my friends who were Hindu or, <laughs> they're or loving something too. else. Yeah, they're loving. Yeah. So I don't think, uh, but I, I think the message carries the same, that you want to show people that you're loving. But it's fun to sing nonetheless. <laughs> it's fun to sing and it's good to be a loving neighbor. Yeah. So uh, something that is not very loving is to hack your neighbors, and that is what happened to the folks over at Sony. Hmm. Um, although the argument might be that the folks at Sony were not being very loving when they made a movie uh, that apparently advocates the assassination of one Kim Jong-un. Huh? So I didn't know that uh, North Korea might be involved in this Sony hack, but there's a possibility that they were. Have you seen the headlines about yes. the Sony hack? Yeah, this is uh, pretty remarkable. It's First of all, it's because of a Seth Rogen movie, right? So Sony says they don't know who's, or excuse me, not Sony, North Korea says they don't know who's behind the massive and embarrassing hack of Sony Pictures, but the government sure isn't upset that it happened. Hackers recently stole, this from money.cnn.com, hackers recently stole and posted online over 100 terabytes of data. Terabytes. That's, That's a, a lot. lot of data from the studio, including full movies, Private employee <laughs> records and revealing internal memos. Mm. The attack is one of the most consequential in history, and some experts theorized it was retaliation for an upcoming Sony movie about North Korea. Yeah, I don't think so. Have you seen some of the computers that Kim Jong Il has been working on? <laughs> Are you talking about? It looks about like he's using a Nintendo Entertainment System from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's, uh, there's they could be hiring uh, or working with the Chinese. He, who knows what the source of this hack is? Nobody really knows at this point, but there's some interesting speculation out there. North Korea's uh, state-run propaganda arm, KCNA, applauded the attack, saying, quote, The hacking into Sony Pictures might be a righteous deed of the supporters and sympathizers with DPRK, it said, using the acronym of its official name, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, continuing. Really? They said that? Because it was my understanding you were supposed to say nothing but Korea. Like, you're only supposed to refer to it as Korea. So I'm surprised that they call themselves DPRK. Mm. Well, that's what I've seen previously. Okay, maybe it, that's not North Korea, though. I guess This is North Korea. Well, this yes, but it's, that doesn't say North Korea. It says the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I'm so therefore, pretty sure the South Korea folks don't call themselves that. I'm pretty sure of that, too. But one of the stipulations about one of the things that people, when they went there, that they were not supposed to call North Korea North Korea. Okay. They were supposed to call it Korea. And uh. supp I suppose what we're doing here is, is they didn't call it North Korea. They called it DPRK. But in my mind, those are the same thing. I see. Uh. The hacking is so fatal. This is their press release from North Korea. The hacking is so fatal that all the systems of the company have been paralyzed, causing the overall suspension of the work and supposedly a huge, uh, supposedly ensuring a huge loss, unquote. North Korea's response with, was, of course, riddled with anti-U.S. and anti-South Korea rhetoric. That's what they do. The statement didn't outright <laughs> say that the North Korean government was not responsible, but KCNA called North Korean involvement a wild rumor, and the government suggested it couldn't be behind a cyber attack on a country far across the ocean. <laughs> what a bunch of grown-up children. Absurd. Uh, we do not know where in America the Sony Pictures is situated and for what wrongdoings it became the target of the attack, nor we feel nor we feel the need to know about it, said the statement. Um, however, in other related news, Variety is now saying Sony's hackers have made a new demand. And the demand is 
from this group calling themselves the Guardian of Guardians of Peace, the GOP. Oh, please. They have warned... The Don't so- they know that, that uh, those initials are taken? They have warned Sony to, quote, stop immediately showing the movie of terrorism which can break the regional peace and cause the war, unquote. Yeah, censorship, they- that's the answer. It's got that awesome English thing going on, so... It-, it definitely does not sound like someone who is a native English speaker. However, maybe that is just something they, you know, they wrote it that way to make it sound like they're not a na- native English speaker. <laughs> In fact, I saw a fairly prescient comment on one of these articles, and that is the suggestion that this is all a viral marketing campaign for this movie. Now, I don't know if the initial break-in and all they of got that DPRK was, but... to release a press release. No, 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 in no, no, English? no, 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 no. The idea that this uh, this news has come out that this hacking group has demanded that Sony take this movie out of the release schedule. It hasn't come out yet. Uh, it's called The Interview. And I saw the preview for it a couple nights ago, just by chance. It didn't look. It doesn't look that great. I I can't say I was laughing or anything at the the promo, but I imagine some audiences will will enjoy it. Um, but the idea being that this movie's getting all this publicity now because the hackers are ostensibly demanding that Sony not release the movie. Now they don't specify which movie in the hackers press release. So you've got a press release from North Korea, right. and you've got a press release from the hackers, both in uh, English. And so, you know, what's the real story behind this? I don't know. The hackers are saying they cannot be found. We'll continue with what they have to say here in a moment. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number here tonight. You can take control of the airwaves. And then we'll hear from somebody who has escaped from North Korea, what he has to say in general. Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-856-4195. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-856-4195. That's 1-800-856-4195. Call 1-800-856-4195 gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can bring up anything that you want. We're talking about North Korea and... Did they have something to do with the hack, this major, like, huge hack on Sony Pictures where 100 terabytes of information have been released? Um, that's a lot, of, not a lot of terabytes. I'm sure, if, you know, another five years we'll be looking back and saying 100 terabytes is nothing. Uh, but, you know, right now, that's a lot of information uh, to be released. And uh, there's a hack group that is taking responsibility for it, they're, or they're claiming responsibility for it, and they're saying that Sony better not release upcoming movie uh, that is scheduled to come out i think later on this month called the interview in which i don't think i pointed this out earlier in this movie the plot of the film is that these two comedians who are in the movie are sent to go uh, and assassinate kim jong-un they're they're granted an interview with him i guess and during that interview the cia asks them to assassinate Kim Jong Un. And as amusing as this might be to uh, you know American audiences or whatever, you know that might kind of hurt your feelings if somebody was making a movie about killing you. Exactly, and I I haven't confirmed this yet, but I heard rumor that uh, the North Korean government has put out a bounty on the stars of the film. Oh God, it seems insecure to do this. I mean, if you're really to so put a bounty strong, out, you mean? Well, if you're some dictator and you're so great. <laughs> Someone making a comedy movie shouldn't really be a threat. Should be like, oh, okay, haha. Ha. Yeah, I've got all these guns and I'm ready to protect myself. But no, seems kind of weak. Like, uh, well, I've got nothing, so I'm going to scream and moan and complain and get some hackers to do some bad stuff for me. That's the question. Did the hackers work on behalf of North Korea, whether that's the case or not? Of course, not. they couldn't have done it themselves, please. <laughs> Well, you, certainly the North Korean uh, state is uh, seriously lacking on things like internet and power. Uh, you usually need to have power in order to get online in the first place, even if they had the ability to get online. Now, presumably the government agents in North Korea do have internet access, the high-level uh Do they know, have bosses. nutrition to operate it? The government guys are eating fairly well. If you're a member of the the party, you know, the elites, uh, Kim Jong-un's elite crew. Then, Kim Jong-un is not a thin man. Yeah, he's, he's sitting pretty. He's, <laughs> he's He chubby. gets cake whenever he wants it. Uh, that's not nutrition. I'm serious. Seeing the pictures in, in these uh, DPRK photo ops, even the, the best pictures that they can take of themselves where it should be really highlighting their best angles, mm -hmm. it could. looks like these people aren't eating well. It looks like they're not clean. It really looks like a society in collapse, like post-collapse. They're eating better now than they were in the 1990s. Yeah. It was during the 90s where they literally had famine due to government-controlled uh, food distribution. Since that time, there has been a real development in the black market and average people are better able to get food and of course the party elites have been able to get food for a long time maybe they get it from china or however they get it but they're doing just fine regardless i'm skeptical that it was their masterminds at the dprk who hacked into what was it 100 terabytes what's that like 4000 movies or something that's a lot of movies i don't think it's even yeah i don't know about that that's a good question yeah but we're going to get to uh, your calls and thoughts here and more about North Korea. From We're going to hear from a, an escapee who has written an article about his experience. He says 
that uh, North Korea will not silence him. Get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay the shipping, we'll give you a free pound of the best of the best coffee. Coffee, probably better than you have tasted in your life. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's delicious coffee, and it's a subscription program. You can cancel it at any time. You can get your free pound and go if that's what you want to do. But if you continue to upgrade your coffee experience by going to coffee.freetalklive.com, we will be able to give for every... Ten people will be able that uh, subscribe every month. Will be able to give another micro loan to another family around the world. Help them get a hand up out of poverty. Not a handout because I don't think that works. I think it's a great program though through Kiva.org, Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so we're going to continue here uh, with the story on North Korea. But first, Mac is in Seattle. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Mac. Well, you know, I used to work in the fishing industry up here in Seattle, and uh, there's a lot of Koreans that uh, that work in the fishing industry. This was back in the, the late 90s or mid-90s, I guess. And uh, uh, one of the guys I worked with, he was talking about how he was reunited with his brother. Now, I don't know when this happened. I think maybe 10 years prior to that, so we're talking in the 80s, they were reunited. The brother had been left up there. They'd been separated somehow. The brother ended up in North Korea. He ended up in South Korea. Huh. And he said the first thing that he that was astonishing to him was how little he was. He said that as if as if he hadn't grown since he was twelve the last time he's due to malnutrition. Very, very small, yeah, that happens. Malnutrition very likely. And then he also said that even five years later, he still thought that Kim Jong Il, which is the father of the pre- the, the current guy, he, even five years later he thought that Kim Jong Il could read his mind. And he he had this was to, after escaping. He after escaping, he said wow. he always had a radio going or a TV going, or he would sleep at night with the radio on and not not quietly, you know, not like a dull murmur, but very loud. He always had something going on, an audio book playing or something, so that he would never be alone with his thoughts, so that Kim Jong Il couldn't hear what he was thinking. Wow, that's terrifying. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I just that you guys mentioned that I'm driving. I just thought, man, I'll call in. And yeah, maybe man. they'll find this use, useful in the context of what the discussion Thanks is. Thanks for the story tonight, Mac, and drive sure. safe. Appreciate the call. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. You want to talk about brainwashing? Yeah, that's pretty uh, wow. Well, we've seen the videos with the doctors, the borders, the doctors without borders, or whatever they mm-hmm. are. They go to help people, you know, with terrible medical afflictions here in this country. And when they, you know, they're, they're healed or whatever, the people jump up and they praise the the picture on the wall they of Kim Jong Un yeah. or ill, um, in the case of what I recall. And it's it's amazing. I mean, there's here's somebody who came half a globe away in order to help you, where the politicians that uh, that rule over you couldn't, mm-hmm. and you jump up and you thank the picture on the wall. Well, I there's mean, two reasons why. Nuts. One, they actually do believe that Kim Jong Il was behind that, and that it was thanks to him. Or two, well, he did let him in, I guess. Or two, they were afraid to do anything other than that. Yeah. Well, I imagine so, that that's a practice, right? Like that's what that's what they do. They they have this little practice of uh, praising the dear leader yes, for everything you, that goes right. And if, if you we, don't, you say bless you. They say yay, Kim Jong Un, or if whatever. If you don't do that practice, then I imagine the punishment could be quite severe. So sometimes when you see people bending on you know on bended knee for the the dear leader, they may only be doing that so they don't get thrown in the gulag. You know, so sure. how much of that is honest versus just hard to know put on? Well, for this guy who's listening to the radio years later to avoid being alone with his thoughts, uh, that's certainly not behavior to conform. Oh, no doubt. That's that's real. And that's scary. Uh, but we know that in North Korea, there is an underground and there are a lot of people who do not appreciate Kim Jong Un and the you know the dictatorship and. You know, the words getting around about ideas like freedom, democracy, not that those are one and the same, but, you know, new ideas are coming into North Korea. And uh, there's a real undercurrent of it from what, you know, reports that I've read. But obviously, you can only do so much openly without being thrown in a horrible gulag where you'll be forced to pick corn out of your own crap in and order you could, to survive. You could really be putting those people in danger by introducing them to some of these ideas or by giving them uh, USB sticks with information they're not allowed to have. And that happens too, that the uh, USB sticks are being smuggled in uh, regularly with television shows, movies from South Korea and the United States, and that's creating, uh, that's helping to foment more of a sea change in a mindset there. We'll continue here in moments. Uh, we'll find out what a refugee has 
has to say coming up. Do you have relatives and friends that are convinced there is no need ever to prepare for any kind of emergency? Are these also folks you buy Christmas presents for? At 30dayfoodsupply.com, we can solve both of these problems at the same time. Go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. We can ship your Christmas presents directly to them. Choose from our original $99 30-day food supply, our long-term storage vegan burger mixes, and other oatmeal, soups, porridges, beans, and granolas for everyday use. All products are non-GMO, MSG-free, and vegetarian. Most are gluten, soy, and nut-free. Call 541-229-0010 today. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low, cutting out the middleman by buying directly from their producers in Oregon. Remember, only $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit the website 30dayfoodsupply.com. Call 541-229-0010. 30dayfoodsupply.com. 541-229-0010. Hours spent volunteering at a local homeless shelter truly make her death at the hands of a drunk driver earlier this week. All the harder to take for this school and this community. I never knew Amanda, but everywhere I went, there were touching reminders of the caring friend she would have been to me had I known her. Losing Amanda was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with, but I knew I had to be strong for this community. I couldn't let them go through the funeral without my support. <laughs> She's so much better than all of us. She was so much good. She cared about so many people. <laughs> she loved you so much. What's your name? She loved me, Russell. And we have O'Brady Shaw with us right now. Thanks, Brooke. Not quite how I would have reported the story. Seems a bit unprofessional to let yourself get so emotional. Well, when people are feeling pain, I feel it too. Don't you ever get emotionally invested in a story? No, I don't. You know, I had my tear ducts cauterized years ago, and I like to keep my emotions stored in a special place in my mind where they only come out for my night terrors. This is the Onion News Network. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about one of the craziest places on Earth, North Korea, where apparently some people believe that the dear leader can actually read their minds. There was a call we had from a guy who knew someone who was an escapee, and uh, he truly believed for something like five years after his escape that Kim Jong-il at the time could read his thoughts and would keep a television or radio running in the background so so as to not allow him to think for himself. 
to think, you know, things that could be picked up by the North Korean brain monitor devices or whatever it is that they tell people about over there. I wonder if that's pervasive. I mean, you'd think it would be if uh, this guy comes back uh, thinking that. I mean, what an effective way to control the populace. To tell them that their thoughts can be I mean, read? It's yeah. a population that has essentially been driven mad by its rulers. Mm -hmm. I wonder... Now, the, the, the thing is, is if you... The reason that we have history class is so that we don't repeat it. Uh, it'd be interesting to know in what ways have... Western societies, you know, the United States and places like that, how have we been driven mad by our governments? Ooh, good question. I would think by an overabundance of laws, by the, the fact that you could be committing a crime at any time of the day and not know it. Yeah, but you're mad. I can't trust you. <laughs> well, yeah, that's an interesting question. You know, in what ways would we be different people if it weren't for the indoctrination of the state that we currently have? I mean, we on this show like to think that... We've had our minds enlightened and having, you know, encountered these ideas of liberty and that that's such a great thing. But don't worry, everybody thinks that crap. How would things be different in a completely, completely different circumstance? I mean, obviously, we probably wouldn't be sitting here today. We wouldn't be the same people that we are. And so, well, it is what it is. The toll free number is 855-450-FREE and Pro XPN is where you need to go. If you care about online privacy, you go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Download their free software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices. Even Linux users can get set up with Pro XPN, though the process is a little different with Linux. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you get their free software and get it rolling, it only takes a moment to install, uh, then you will be protected. They will be encrypting your data connection, meaning your internet service provider won't be able to snoop on you anymore. Or that coffee shop administrator or whoever it is that's trying to sniff your packets and get your credit card information. All that stuff will become off limits it'll be encrypted be very difficult to get a hold of that information as soon as you start using pro xpn go to proxpn.com slash ftl to get started for free but when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites you can do it all for about five bucks a month using our discount code ftl50 that's ftl like free talk live and the number 50 as in 50 percent off the price of their annual account. You can save even more with Bitcoin. Use code FTLBTC, then pay with Bitcoin on that annual account. You'll save 62%. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. Use promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC at proxpn.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Yeah, I had this story about North the North Korean re refugee in my show prep here for a little bit, and then North Korea is back on the, the news radar here with a story about the Sony Pictures hack, the suggestion being that maybe North Korea was behind this. Apparently, the North Korean government is very upset about this upcoming movie that Sony's going to release called The Interview, in which the plot of the film focuses on assassinating. It's a comedy, but it focuses on assassinating the uh, the leader over there in North Korea, their their regime ruler Kim Jong Un. Has there ever been an assassination comedy? There's the um, one question. that uh, Borat did, uh, Sasha Boren Cohen, about the dictator. That was good, but that was fictional. Uh, yeah, there well, was, there have been no like uh, fictional, as in the dictator was a fictional character. Yeah, have have there been any movies maybe in the the 40s or something where it's like we're gonna take out Stalin or you know during the there... time where the dictator's alive? Yeah, I, don't I mean know. that's this is kind of unique in that yeah, sense, right? It might be. And it's certainly in our lifetime. Yeah, they're being extra courageous in that sense that they're not waiting for. Oh, the yeah, passage they're courageous. Of time. They're in uh, Los Angeles picking <laughs> on North Korea. That sure is courageous. Yeah, you all know? right. You, you're fair to point out my choice of words there. <laughs> if they'd have been talking about an assassination attempt against a Western leader or something like that, maybe that would have been courageous. But picking on little North Korea, you know, the whipping boy of the world, I'm not saying it's a nice place or anything like that, but it, it, as a matter of fact, it's the opposite. There's a bunch of nuts over there, but it's not exactly like they've gone out on a limb. So is this real, this uh, press re this release from the group calling themselves GOP, the Guardians of Peace, where they're demanding that Sony stop, this is a quote from their release, quote, Im stop immediately showing the movie of terrorism which can break the regional peace and cause the war, unquote. 
the suggestion being that they're talking about the interview. It doesn't actually yep. specify. I in guess the this release. is for the South Korean audience because you got to remember Hollywood's now producing for a global audience. It's not. It's no longer for just us. So maybe they're expecting huge sales in in South Korea. Mm. Well, anyway, the movie has generated condemnation from the government of North Korea. The message from the GOP also said that they quote have given our clear demand to the management team of Sony. However, they have refused. You, Sony, and FBI cannot find us, unquote. The Where do all- these guardians of peace, do they um, assemble in any particular place? Or they do they claim... They're hackers. That's all we know about them. Okay, so they live on the internet? Presumably, yes. Okay. Some of them do. Uh, a spokeswoman for Sony said they have no comment. An individual close to the studio said they've received no demands. The message also claims to, quote, know nothing about the threatening email received by Sony staffers, unquote. An apparent reference to a message received on Friday that authorities are also investigating. The North Korean government has denied involvement in the hacker attack, but it has issued threats about the movie, a comedy in which Seth Rogen and James Franco play entertainment journalists who get recruited by the CIA to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Last week, social security numbers from tens of thousands of Sony employees were leaked online along with other wow. information, including the salaries of Mr. Rogan and Franco. Don't they release that, release that in Variety? I don't know, but that article was in Variety. Toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. I guess we can check it against the facts. Here's a story from the Washington Post from Shin Dong-hyuk. He is a human rights activist who lives in Seoul, South Korea. And he writes at the uh, at WashingtonPost.com, quote, I committed a grave sin against my father when I fled the North Korean prison camp where I was born. Wow. I was 23 years old, fully aware that my escape from Camp 14 would trigger his torture and probably his execution. Because in case you don't know, in North Korea, if you get in trouble with the law, your family members also go to the prison camp. And well- if you're born in the prison camp, you stay in the prison camp because they're punishing your family. Wouldn't that be an incentive for an entire family to plan a break together? Probably a little bit easier than it might, uh, or a little harder than it might seem. Yeah. Um, I mean, they probably separate you and stuff. They probably can't all leave at once for obvious reasons. And, uh, you know, the Jones family is all by the door. (laughs) If they all leave at once, they're more likely to get caught. Yeah. And also, you know, there's. The, the prison prison guards have been doing this stuff for a very long time. They're reasonably good at this sort of separate divide and conquer strategy. Hey, I'll give you information if you just turn over your family member and what they're doing, you know, that kind of thing. So, mm. you know, there's that. I mean, this guy was willing to sacrifice his father's life for freedom. Sacrifice his father's life. Do you think his father knew about this? We'll find out here. Then I knew nothing of the love between fathers and sons. My wild hunger for what lay beyond the camp's electric fence trumped everything else, even fear of my own death. Leaving my father behind to suffer and to die, I ran off, first to China, then to South Korea and the United States. So it sounds to me like, you know, he says he knew nothing of the love between fathers and sons. How could he? His, Mm -hmm. His whole life was this prison camp. That's all he knew. And I don't imagine there's much cuddling, uh, you know, and loving that goes on in a prison camp between family members. That was nearly 10 years ago, he says. My life has since been consumed by regret and by concern about my father and all the others I left behind. Trying to raise awareness of the human rights catastrophe in my homeland, I've told my ghastly story around the world. Escape from Camp 14, a book about my life by journalist Blaine Hardin, who assisted me with writing this column, has been published in 28 languages. I was witness number one before a U.N. inquiry that questioned more than 300 survivors of abuse in North Korea. It concluded this year that crimes against humanity have been and are being committed by the government there. See what else he has to say here in moments on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. 
legislative, executive, judicial. The fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about North Korea, life in a prison camp. One man escaped and is now telling his story in an article over the Washington Post called North Korea Will Not Silence Me. His name is Shin Dong Hyuk, and he uh, escaped several years ago, about 10 years back. Apparently, he wrote a book called Escape from Camp 14. So if you want to know more about his experience, I would probably suggest picking that one up. I imagine it would be quite fascinating. We'll give you a little bit more of what he has to say here in a moment. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And don't forget to join us online. You can help support what we're doing here on Free Talk Live. If you like the ideas of freedom and you like the fact that we're talking about them regularly, seven nights a week, live on over 150 radio stations from coast to coast and beyond, on the internet via satellite delivery to lots of different countries around the world in Africa, North America, and Central America. We uh, need your help. We can do 
it and we can do more of those things, getting on more radio stations, bringing more internet listeners on and more satellite listeners. We can do all of that for five bucks a month from you. Uh, now that's the price of a hamburger or a cup of coffee, a fancy cup of coffee. If that's what our show is worth to you, the entertainment that you're getting, but not just the entertainment, the value of spreading the ideas of liberty is worth five bucks a month. Please become an amplifier. You get perks. You get, uh, you know, the Amp Only call in lines, the Amp Only Facebook group, which is always very busy. There's always new posts every day in the Amp Only Facebook group. So I'm, I'm really happy with how that's worked out. We've also got the Amp Only forum, which, yeah, not so many people on the forums anymore. Facebook is kind of where it's at, but yeah, the forum's still there. And there's some other perks involved. You get those perks, but really you're helping us a lot with that five bucks a month. So please go to amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. And you can also help Derek J directly as well. He will not take federal reserve notes uh we will we'll take the federal reserve notes here on free talk live although we are working i will say this i don't want to jinx anything but we are working on finally it's been asked for in the past working on having bitcoin as an option for amp right uh, a the, reoccurring bitcoin payment right the reason it couldn't happen in the past was because in the past there was no reoccurring bitcoin option you couldn't do that with bitcoin but now apparently coinbase allows that to happen as long as you've got bitcoin in your account you can set up recurring payments. So there's a there's a redesign going on behind the scenes of the Free Talk Live website. It may not be until halfway through next year. I don't know. Sometimes these things take way longer than they should. Uh, but it's on the list of to-dos is to allow the AMP program to take Bitcoin as payments. So I'm excited about that. Very cool. Meanwhile, if you do have Bitcoin burning a hole in your Bitcoin wallet and you really just got to you know transfer it somewhere... Uh, you can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. We have the Bitcoin tip jar there. You can also go directly to Derek J's website at derekj.me. And where will one find a Bitcoin donation option on your website? It's right up there in the top hand right corner. It says sponsor. So it's derekj.me slash sponsor. And of course, they'll find a myriad of different video and audio things that you produce regularly yeah i just took some video today of 101 deals thrift store here in Keene. it's oh, a good. new entrepreneurial venture by some uh, participants in the free state project people who moved to new hampshire for more freedom started a business yeah. and are increasing freedom every day and and what's been open for uh, about a month now right? almost a month now yeah very it's exciting. very exciting we've uh, even expanded a bit we've uh, introduced a, a, you know some new merchandise some new um Floor store space. shelves and yeah. space and everything we're expanding so it's good I, I'm really excited about that, and especially considering you guys are thriving even amidst a, an active boycott uh, against the <laughs> store by local uh, hater group. That's Stop right. Freaking. So, yeah, go and check out more of Derek J and throw him a donation over at DerekJ.me. Back to the story here from the escapee from North Korea. He left his father behind knowing that his escape would likely lead to his father being tortured and killed. But all he cared about, because he didn't know anything about love... He was born and raised in a hellacious prison camp. I mean, I've I've read the stories about these places, and Scary stuff. it's horrifying the things that happen there. You want to talk about malnutrition, starvation, uh, that's happening, and serious levels of abuse, murder, rape. I mean, you just name it. It's just horrifying, as you can imagine. People literally eating dung in order to try to get some sort of sustenance. You can't claim that happens in an American prison. Yeah. This confirms for me a person's innate will f to be free, that he may not understand love, but he understands that he wants to be free. I wonder how many uh, people in the prison camp really, you know, have that desire to leave. Given well, that he's never experienced freedom. So, like, you can only know uh, what's dark from what's light, right? So, yeah. like, if you're in a prison cell your whole life and you never experienced freedom, how do you even know what there. it is? How do you even know what it is? How do you know what to escape to? How do you know what's out there? What if, if anything is beyond the prison walls? I mean, it's very, you know, Truman Show-esque, wherein, you know, this person is raised in a place the whole time that they've uh, been alive— and why would the North Korean government give them any information about what's out there? There's no reason for them to tantalize them. Yeah, very interesting. I would love to know uh, how he knew that there was something outside Good worth, question. worth going for. Check out his book, Escape from Camp 14. Here's the rest of the story from the Washington Post. Uh, he says that it... Let's see. The U.N. inquiry. He was involved in this. Uh, he was witness number one in this inquiry that questioned more than 300 survivors of abuse in North Korea. It concluded this year that crimes against humanity have been and are being committed by the government there. It also found that the responsibility for these crimes rests on the shoulders of the country's young dictator, Kim Jong-un. 
At the United Nations this month, I found a measure of victory and vindication as 111 nations voted to refer North Korea for trial in the International Criminal Court. The referral, though, is non-binding and must be acted on by the Security Council, and that seems unlikely. China has indicated it will use its veto to block any trial. Still, the vote was a stinging and historic humiliation for North Korea, and its government worked feverishly to prevent it. For a while, Pyongyang tried accommodation. It released Americans that it had held prisoner. We talked about that briefly, that Kenneth Bay who had been held for a while as, a, I guess, an American Christian who'd gone over there. Right. Uh, he was released. He uh, Let's see, going on here. It invited a U.N. human rights official to visit the country, but not their prison camps, and deigned to discuss human rights for the first time with foreign diplomats. Then it resorted to threats. A North Korean U.N. representative said that if the vote passed, Pyongyang would have no choice but to explode a fourth nuclear device. The country warned last week of, quote, catastrophic and unimaginable consequences, unquote, of what it calls the human rights racket. North Korea has also tried to block, uh, blacken my character, accusing me in videos released on YouTube of being a liar, a rapist, and a thief. Well, they can pretty much claim he's anything if he uh, was in prison camp, right? They can just say yeah. whatever they want. Right. Um, you know, I mean... I suppose he could be, right? Like they could, he could be any of these things. The problem is, is that we believe him. The, I mean, there's a preponderance of evidence at this point uh, that points to these uh, prison camps that gives this guy credence as to whether or not this man was born in a prison camp and, uh, you know, managed to escape and, and bring us this uh, interesting story, or he's some kind of rapist that was there legitimately and managed to get out and says, hey, you know what, I, I was born in that place. We'll mm -hmm. never know that. But the problem that P Pyongyang has is, is that these places exist and they are hell holes. And the reason they're hell holes is really simple. The rest of the country's a hell hole. You have to make the prison worse. Right. Now, the country itself is a prison. I mean, you, can, you, uh, it, it's worse. It's, I mean, all the countries in the world are, to some extent, these plantations that we're forced to stay on. But, right. you know, you get the permission slip from master, and then you're allowed to go to some of the other plantations. It's the biggest— You can't just, do that in North Korea. It's the biggest uh, sort of uh, thing that flies in the face of, you know, the, the claim that the United States has the world's largest prison population. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? What about the whole population of uh, North Korea? Yeah. So, it's I mean, pretty bad. You know, that's that. Um, so you think that's bad? Well, look at this. In one of the videos that they have made about him, he says, My 70-year-old father appeared and joined in the chorus of my accusers. You want to talk about sad? Well, what else? Could he, he what said, other choice did he have? Well, right. But, I mean, that's really hard to watch, right? Yeah, sure. He said that neither he nor I had ever lived in a political labor camp. Well, I hope he got out as a result. It was an extraordinary shock. I had thought he was dead. Now I know that his torture continues at the hands of his North Korean jailers who are forcing him to lie. My guilt for abandoning my father is more painful than ever. I dearly miss him. I love him. There's a pretty big gap in years. It sounds like his father is 70 and he's 23. Uh, I think you are correct about that. Or was he 23? When he escaped. No, he was 23 when he escaped, so he's now 33. I see. Uh, going on here, in Camp 14, he says there was no concept of family. I did not know a child's heart. We were starving animals, competing against each other, betraying each other for scraps of food. The feelings I have now for my father were learned only after I escaped the hell of that prison. How do you learn him that way? I mean, he's been escaped for, what, 10 years now? Mm-hmm. You'd Through observation of others, I would presume. Like, How other people treat their family members. But what's the point in it? I mean, you know, my family didn't treat me. My family treated me like a dog, uh, you know, competing for food. That, to me, is the, the hardest part about the story to believe. Well, humans are remarkable at adapting. I, that much is true. Toll free number tonight, 855-450 free. Well, maybe, you know, maybe he wasn't competing with his father like a dog. That's what he, he says. It doesn't say that specifically. He says we were starving animals competing against each other. That could mean him and other people in the camp in general. Uh, it does refer to his family, the sentence before that. In moments, we'll continue his story. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. 
Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. You've heard of Black Friday doorbuster deals. Well, don't miss Lumber Liquidator's floorbuster deals. Get incredible discounts on your favorite floors at one-time only prices. There's never been a better time to get a great deal on pre-finished hardwoods, hand-scraped hardwoods, gorgeous bamboo, top-quality laminates, and get 26 months special financing. Plus, get even more floorbuster discounts in our stores. The sale ends Tuesday. So these deals will not wait until after the holidays. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Free speech is protected on the internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,192, silver around $16.28, and Bitcoin is trading around $373. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bee or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Bee to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, on Sunday, former CIA Director Michael Hayden claimed the CIA never lied about his torture program, as alleged by Senate Democrats. Hayden appeared on CBS's Face the Nation, claiming that waterboarding was no longer used when he served under the last years of the Bush administration. Hayden's statements come as the Senate Intelligence Committee prepares to release its report on the CIA's use of torture techniques. The report is expected to find that the CIA went beyond the law and lied to the White House, Congress, the Department of Justice, and the agency itself. Chicago activists believe they have proof of the local police using Stingray technology to monitor their phone conversations at protests. A video released Friday by hacktivist group Anonymous claims that audio of a phone conversation between officers shows them discussing using cell phone monitoring tools on organizers. At one point, the officers can be heard discussing a woman who is on the phone, asking the other officer whether or not they were picking up any information on where the protest was headed. Activists also posted pictures of a vehicle they believe may have been using some type of signal disruption technology. Indigenous activists in New Hazleton, British Columbia, closed down Highway 16 Saturday to protest recent approvals for two natural gas pipelines. The pipelines would run through Getson Territory. The local chiefs say the projects threaten the salmon population and the community's livelihood. The Liberty Bee is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Bee is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Police fired tear gas at hundreds of protesters in Oakland, California, after it was alleged that explosives were thrown at highway patrol officers Sunday night. 
Meanwhile, the Oakland Tribune reports that at least three police officers and a technician were injured and six arrests made Sunday night in Berkeley, California, as a result of similar protests calling for police reforms. On Sunday, Mexico's Attorney General Jesus Murillo stated that evidence confirmed that 43 student teachers were incinerated at a garbage dump by gang members. Murillo stated that Austrian experts tested a bone fragment from a bag of ash that was found and found a match for one of the students. The Argentine forensic anthropology team also helped with the forensics and cautioned that the search for the missing should continue because of a lack of sufficient evidence. These students have been missing since September 26 from Aguala, Mexico. Over the weekend, six men were transferred from the military prison in Guantanamo Bay to Uruguay to be resettled as refugees. The men were held for more than 12 years, but never charged. The deal was negotiated by the Pentagon and the government of Uruguay. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers criticized the transfer, saying that foreign governments are often ill-equipped to monitor the former prisoners. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Comedy-minded, but liberty-focused. Corey and his guest hosts tackle the topics of the day from a liberty perspective. The Corey Moore Show. Catch it live each Friday night at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's The Onion Radio News. The nation's last remaining themeless restaurant has closed. This is Doyle Redland reporting. A once vibrant era came to an end today when Pat's Place, the nation's last themeless restaurant, closed its doors in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. During the heyday of themeless restaurants, Pat's Place achieved a certain amount of notoriety for its unique non-themed food items and unadorned atmosphere. But according to owner Patrick Baines, the times have changed. Lately, we've had only a handful of people coming in to gawk at our posterless walls and mundanely named menu items like hamburgers or pancakes. And then they go someplace like the Rainforest Cafe or Johnny Rockets to actually eat. Plans are now in the works to convert the Pat's Place location into Cedar Rapids' seventh patio touchdown sports bar and good time internet grill. Doyle Redland for the Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about North Korea. What was it like over there in the prison camps? We are reading a story from WashingtonPost.com uh, written by a man who escaped. He was 23 years old at the time when he fled the prison camp. It's now been 10 years. And it turns out his father, who he thought would be killed for his escape, his father's still alive. And has been involved in making a video. North Korean government has been releasing videos about the escapee, claiming that he's a liar, a rapist, and a thief. And in one of the videos, his 70-year-old father appeared and joined the chorus of my accusers. Now, uh, this guy obviously believes that his father has been tortured into saying these things on video. Mark, you're saying you might not necessarily believe his claims. Yeah, I mean, it's just I I I wonder um, what he's uh, he, he he's saying here. It just it it all seems kind of sort of surprising to me. What's the surprising part? Well, um, in in the last segment, he was talking about the uh, love for family that uh, he has somehow found after he left the family that he knew, uh, like. Um, you know that this this is tearing him apart. He's uh, he thinks his father's being tortured. Mm-hmm. And that's why his father's saying what he's saying. But why wouldn't, you know, it, really you think that they're going to torture him rather than just give him another bologna sandwich or something? Hmm. Well, I think that, you know, considering the torture is fairly common in the North Korean prison system, I imagine that's why he figures they're torturing him. I suppose it's possible, but... Uh, that's what he was. It's what he grew up with was people being tortured all around him and him as that's well. That's the claim. Yeah. 
well, I, I'm going to believe the claims of the North Korean refugees. I'm I think sorry. The, I mean, the I'm going to take problem, the government's word for it. The biggest problem that Pyongyang has is that people will believe this story. And well, I don't know whether it's true or not. The government did not let the UN envoy into their prison camps. That's when they true. Allowed him to come over. Do you, think the United St- you think the United States would let the UN into uh, the into any of its prison prisons or or? Um, well, I know you and I can go to the prison and at least visit people in the United in. States. So yeah, I think so. You're talking about the visitation room, but that's not that's like getting something. a tour. That's better than nothing. They probably don't have a visitation room. You can go on tour of the Keene Spiritual Retreat right here in uh, in Keene, that- aka the County Jail. Sounds awesome. So it just depends on the warden as to whether or not they allow a tour. What about uh, when Private Manning was in jail? Um, it was very the UN was like wanting to help him in some way and was being rebuffed. Part of the whole idea of jails is they're supposed to be isolating places, right? Isn't that part of the punishment? To some extent, but you're still in with other prisoners, so you're not totally isolated unless you're in solitary confinement, right? So back to the story here. Uh, by the way, Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark in the studio. You can, of course, call in about anything. Obviously, most of our listeners have no experience with North Korea, so there's not much you can say uh, as far as your opinion goes because nobody really knows what goes on. We just have to take people's word for it. And me, I'm going to take the word of the people that have escaped. On I just think on it's an inside. interesting thing that he's claiming to love yeah. his father that he was uh, stealing, lying to, and stealing food from when he left. I mean, it's just it's an odd thing to say. I it don't would know make if it's more that sense. Odd. It would make more sense to me if he said something like, "You know how you people feel like you love your family? I don't feel that." I was raised in a North Korean prison where I was forced to fight for every scrap of food I had against my very family members. I mean, you know, like that would make much more sense to me than this sort of this claim that, um, you know, now that he's left where, you know, he left, his father was going to be tortured as a result. He didn't care. That's what he said. I have committed a grievous sin against my father. Mm -hmm. That was what he opened the the article with. And now that he has moved into a culture where it makes, uh, where it is uh, popular to love your family, he's saying, I love my family. It's so painful for me to hear my father repudiating me. And North Korea is saying this guy's a rapist. And I don't know what to believe on this story. Wow, I mean, man. it just and that you would even take North Korea's word. I'm not on this. taking it. There's, well, why am I taking the, this North Korean guy's word? I only want the side of truth, and it sounds like a flimsy story, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, it's not unreasonable to believe that somebody who's now immersed for ten years in a different culture, where family is, in, in my opinion, wrongfully. Uh, put on this pedestal. I, he's I, been saying this stuff for years, though, and he said he's been saying that. So his story's been pat for a while. It sounds to me sort of like he's adapting to his new environment. He's gotten to a safe place. He's like, all right, what's it like here? What do the people act like here? Mm-hmm. How do they treat their families? I'm going to act like that so I'm not seen as some weirdo and I don't get kicked off back to North Korea. Right. Well, I mean, how is he going to be anything but a weirdo? He was raised in North Korea. So I, I just, I, you know, I mean, I want to know... Really, does he love this guy? Because the story seems just so weird to me. I can't imagine it he actually does. Right he doesn't sound right to me. S- it sounds like he's just conforming to his new environment. It doesn't sound like he actually remorse. You know, he's feeling Could remorse. Be. Not to me. I, I mean, don't I'll, care. I don't really care whether he. I know really does you don't or not. care. You've taken a side. You'd had a side before yes, you listened to the story. My side is against the North Korean state. Yes. How dare I? Know. I? I'm not. No, Ian. Come to a conclusion about no, this. No. Okay, oh my God. Ian. I don't what care the- whether you're for or against North Korea. I care whether you're for or against the truth. And that's the problem I've had with you all along. Is you'll take the side against cops. You'll take the side against politicians. You'll take the Usually side that's against the North side Korea to take. because you don't give a flip about the truth. You care about your agenda, and it's despicable. I'm I'm sorry. I don't know what the truth is, Mark. No, me either. But I know that I'm going to take one side over another because usually it's just you're taking one person's word over another. And I'm going to disbelieve the lying politicians and the lying prison guards and the lying cops because they've been proven to be liars time and time again. It's a safe position. Well, yeah. So what That's evidence right. do we have? If you're concerned about truth, what evidence does this article put forward? Not about much any other? under this, this sort of flimsy story. You know? All right. Well, we can believe or not that this guy is feeling remorse, but what is true is that he escaped from North Korea, the conditions there were bad, and that his father was on this propaganda-looking TV screen denouncing him. Those, that's all true. Well, maybe it's not true, Mark. Maybe he didn't escape North Korea. Maybe they let him go. How then about wh- that? So Let's they, just disbelieve everything the guy says. So, so that they would put Why out Why do we this- even read anything on the air if we're not going to uh, take somebody's word for it? 
why not take North Korea's word for it? Because politicians, cops, and prison gu- prison guards have a tendency to lie. Oh no, people have a tendency to lie. Cops, Especially prison guards, and politicians power. tend to be people. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yeah. people with power. But everybody lies, Ian. And mm-hmm. I don't look. This guy's job going around preaching against North Korea is probably better than his job working at some shoe factory in South Korea because that's all he would have been able to do when he got out. That's all I'm saying is, is he's got a, he's got a motivation here too. So you're going to go travel over to North Korea since you've got such trust in their politicians? I have no trust in their politicians, Ian. Okay. 855-450 free. That's the toll-free number here tonight. Going on here with this man's story. You you know, I'm not saying he's telling the truth, but yes, you are. I'm more likely to believe him over the politicians. No, I don't know what the truth is, Mark. I've already said that. Good. So going on here, since watching the video of my father, I felt an overwhelming desire to travel to North Korea and be with him. My friends, of course, have warned me that I would be killed, but I want to give North Korea a chance to live up to its claims that its citizens are living happily and in freedom. If it seeks credibility, the regime should welcome my request to meet my father, who doesn't have much time left on this earth, so that he can see and touch my face. It should be an open, publicized, official visit that includes an on-the-ground inspection of Camp 14. I think it would be better if uh, they just let his father go. If that's, you know, I mean, that seems like a much more likely uh, set of circumstances than him being able to go see Camp 14. When you say let him go, you mean let him leave the country? Yeah. Realistically, such a visit is unlikely, and my guilt about my father will only deepen. In all probability, China will use its UN veto to insulate Kim and his underlings from accountability for crimes against humanity that continue to this day. Yeah. If you believe the claims. Well, that's one of the problems with these having these major nations. Maybe have, all these people are lying about the prison camps, right, Mark? I don't these believe that they're just re- a big plot. I don't believe they're lying about the prison camps, Ian. Okay. I'm not that's claiming that. Well, I don't know what you I don't know what you're confused on. Well, it just seems to me like you're... You just uh, feel like, yo, oh, somebody's called my integrity into question. Ian, I question your integrity. You always take the side of the people that you dislike on the government, and sometimes they're telling the truth. I think this guy's story sounds a little flimsy. That's all I've said. Okay. Um, Camp 14 still operates, as do other political labor camps that imprison up to 120,000 people. Camp guards continue to punish children and their parents, working them to death as slaves and snitches in a world without love. For all my guilt about my father's continuing torment, I will not be silenced. Injustice cannot cover up justice. I have an obligation to those still in the camps, as does everyone in the outside world. Well, I don't know if everyone has that obligation, but I can understand his, uh, his feelings there. This is one of the most evil things I can imagine in present day. You know, we can go back and think about lots of evil things. But if I were to think, what's the most evil thing happening? It's in North Korea. We'll come back with more. 855-450 free. That's the toll-free number. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, 
I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The Warning Signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. I hold in my hand the liberty gift of the season. It's in freedom's cause. And it is an extraordinary audio theater production. It's a two-CD set, and when you hear this, you'll just be stunned that this was done specifically in audio, not um, you know, not a movie soundtrack that's been ripped to CD or something like that. It's incredible. It's got big-name actors and actresses. James Cosmo from Braveheart, uh, Joanne Froggett from Downton Abbey, Billy Boyd of Lord of the Rings, and Skandar Keys of Chronicles of Narnia. It is incredible. It's called In Freedom's Cause. It's the story of William Wallace, which, in um, you know, like Braveheart, only historically accurate. And this is one of the greatest stories of the struggle for freedom in human um, history. Your children are going to love it. It's uh, it's it's family friendly. It's got a study guide online and is a real crash course in uh, uh, study for freedom, the struggle for freedom. Excuse me. In freedomscause.com, they have a special offer for Free Talk Live listeners. Use coupon code FTL and get the family four pack of CDs for half price. In freedomscause.com, use coupon code FTL. And I stand by my statement that this is the liberty gift of the season. In freedomscause.com, coupon code FTL to get it half price. All right, so the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Derek Jay is going to be telling us about someone who said, if you, uh, well, don't support laws that you aren't willing to kill to enforce. I want to talk about that if we get the chance. But, Mark, you called my integrity into question uh, a moment ago, and, you know, I like to think I have integrity, but you're saying I don't because I tend to take the side of or take a side against the police. I yeah. tend to, without evidence, that's the important part, is that it's not about truth. 
it seems, for you. It's about a bias. You have an agenda, is what Mark said. Oh, absolutely, I have an agenda. And I a mean, bias. My agenda, my, well, yeah, of course. My bias is based on evidence. And the evidence is well, that everybody, police Every bias lie. is based on evidence. The evidence is, is that police have a tendency to tell lies. Not only that, they are instructed to tell lies. It's part of their training to tell lies. Not only that, I've seen evidence that police tend to abuse people. And if they aren't being video recorded, and sometimes if they are being video recorded, they will abuse people even further. Wait a minute. I have to interject here and say it's not the police themselves. It's the, the people have a tendency to do what they can get away with, right? So if there sure. are no consequences, whether they're police or not, yet they may lie. It's true. And the police don't even hardly ever have consequences, even if they do get caught on video telling lies and abusing people. So when presented with a new situation in which there's a possibility the police are lying and abusing people, I'm just going to go ahead and likely believe the people who are claiming the police are lying and abusing people in the absence of any evidence whatsoever. If it's, one, word, if it's one side against another, I'm going to pick a side based on evidence in the past. In Rialto, California, when they put... Uh cameras on their police officers, they had an 80% reduction in the, um, well, a 66% reduction in the uses of force and an 80% reduction in the uh, claims of, that there were of police brutality, mm -hmm. which means that four out of the five people that would normally be claiming police brutality are no longer claiming it, and the police are only kicking people's butts a third of the time. That means that they've had a larger drop in the brutality claims than they have had in the the use of force, which could mean one of two things. A, police, uh, when they use force, are uh, more use more discretion. Or B, the people who tell lies in hopes of getting some kind of settlement from the government um, are, are withdrawing those, are no longer making those claims because, mm -hmm. well, you know, they're not going to get any money because there's video of what happened. Yeah. Now, that I just I want to understand that I want you to understand that people work by motives. Do law does law enforcement have perverse motives? They absolutely do. But let's not forget that there's people on the other side of the picture that have motives too, and that those motives can cause people to lie. I haven't forgotten that. I will acknowledge that you're right. There are people who will lie about what the police do as well, which, you know, again, I don't oppose the idea of police having cameras to shine light on whatever, you know, semblance of the truth we might be able to glean from I having like that video. Idea having video footage uh but again you know given the the given evidence in front of me one side saying one thing the other side, side saying the other i'm going to side with the people without power i'm going to side without uh, with the people who do not have the ability to wield force with impunity with no consequences whatsoever with no accountability whatsoever i'm going to side with those people and i don't think there's anything that's not integral uh, integral about that if new evidence comes to light that shows that, oh, in point of fact, this person was actually telling a lie about the police, then I'll change my mind about that. It's not that I'm not open to hearing new evidence, but given that I should come to a conclusion about who's likely telling the truth, I think it's likely going to be the, the innocent victims. Well, so you're claiming that there's no problem with honesty or integrity if you immediately take the side of take take a particular side like you have a bias and taking that side that you're you're claiming that there's no problem with honesty or integrity in doing that yeah, I'm being very honest about how I feel. Yeah, I think that yeah. that um, I think you're being honest about how you feel, but I, I think we have a different definition of what integrity is. I think that we um, that what one needs to do is one needs to continue asking questions. Now, when another start side stonewalls, which is going to be the case of North Korea here, and usually in the case of police departments, mm -hmm. it's their policy to stonewall. They'll say, "Well, we've got." Uh, an I ongoing only have so much time to ask questions, man. Sure, I understand. I only have so much time to in, to investigate these cases. Well, it's a good thing somebody else on um, on the show is here too. You know, just say every once in a while, whoa, whoa, hey, let's not run too far ahead here. I can see neither case uh, having full responsibility for their claims. This escapee cannot verify his claims with video evidence, and the government can't verify their claims. So on no, both but the sides, escapee can verify his claims through the claims of other escapees, and unless they're all in on the same gigantic plot to make the North Korean prison system look bad, uh, I tend to believe the escapees. Okay, well, I just want to say, you There's know... There's a preponderance the of evidence on the side of the escapees. Um, the only claim of the escapee that I have questioned is his this, this love for his father that he keeps on harping on. Yeah, and in the absence of evidence from either side, it just makes more sense if you value truth to uh, 
but take the less extraordinary claim. And this extraordinary claim that uh, this man escaped, I don't know, what are, what claim do you doubt, Mark? I, uh, what claim of his, that he loves his father? I mean, big deal. Well, though, he's, he's harping on it. And then, and, and, you know, and I said, I started this off by saying, we don't know whether he's an escaped rapist or not. North Korea right. claims that he is. I don't know whether he is or not. He claims he was born in a, a North Korean prison. We have really no evidence to claim one way or the other. I don't know the answer to well, that. without evidence, and I don't I'm think not going to really believe matters. someone's a rapist. What's that? Without evidence, I'm not going to believe the claim he's a rapist. You, th- I this, give it no credence. At this point around the world, we do take government's root word that people are rapists. That's well, just Stop it. The you general, need to have evidence of that. The general okay. consensus is, is that that's what people do. No, it's not integral to just take the government's word for something. I don't care if, you, you know, people do that. Governments, sadly, don't give out a lot of information. And that can well, be then good I'm not gonna believe the guy's for some rapist. rapists, right? Some rapists don't want their information given out. Are they even claiming this guy was a rapist? That was yes. a claim they made about that. him. Yeah, uh, They've been making videos, apparently, about him. Uh, I don't believe him. Because right, he's the fact come that out. they spend time t- making videos about him, I think, speaks against what they're doing. Huh. You know, if they were, if they should just say, yeah, well, whatever. It, they shouldn't say anything. Just well, there's a nothing. reason why a lot of these North Korean refugees will hide their faces when they do media. This guy's not hiding. There's more coming up here in moments. You can take control of the airwaves. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Sam Nussbaum, WellPoint's chief medical officer. We proudly support the March of Dimes mission to improve the health of babies and fight premature birth. We're helping the March of Dimes fund breakthroughs in research and community programs that help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthy babies. Join us in working together to provide children with a healthier start in life. Visit marchofdimes.org. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free to bring up what you want at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you there. In the Bitcoin community, people have long been looking for the ability to buy a car with Bitcoin. I've heard it over and over again that the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin economy will be mature when you can buy a car with Bitcoin. Well, that, that's happened. It's been the case for more than a month. There is a Bitcoin auto dealership called NewAgeAutoSales.com. Obviously, they do sell cars for, for dollars, but they'll buy, they'll, they'll let you buy a car, one of their late model, well-maintained cars from their rental fleet. Uh, they take good care of them. And the, the advantage of a, a car coming from a rental fleet is, is that you don't have to pay for the auction fees and the transport costs that go into a, a regular used car. Um, pretty much every other used car is going to get moved around on the back of a truck or somebody has to drive it to auction and then get back somehow. And those things, you know, they have inherent costs. New Age Autosales.com, they use their own late model, well-maintained cars, and they can ship them anywhere in the world, and they'll let you buy them for Bitcoin. So if you want a mature Bitcoin marketplace and you are looking for a car, this is the time and the place to do it. Head on over to their website or give them a call today and buy a car from the first Bitcoin auto dealership, New Age Auto autosales.com. I think this is very exciting, and it's a it's an advertiser I'd love to keep. I sincerely hope they uh, get a lot of uh, reactions. Newageautosales.com. All right, so the toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We go to Sleepy Salsa on Skype. You are on Free Talk Live. Hey, it's good to be back on with you, Ian. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate it. Hey, listen, I, I uh, you guys were mentioning a moment ago uh, about uh, you know believing the cops or not believing the government and so forth, and you know, you know, a lot of the guys that uh, that I talked to were kind of concerned about what was happening in Ferguson, especially with the property damage and so forth. And it's it's rather interesting that how people can be uh, or the the the. <laughs> the population in general can be manipulated. I mean, the fact of the matter is that Michael Brown was a violent criminal. It, that does not therefore mean that the cops are great, but it does mean that if we're going to win this info war, we have to speak with truth. And there was a reason the grand jury decided to uh, not indict uh, you know, that, that officer. So well, I've heard that they were presented with uh, bad evidence. I heard that very recently. Well, they were presented with uh, a bad law, a bad interpretation of the law. So um, yeah. there's an older one from I think 1977. The raw story reported on it yesterday. Not that the raw story isn't somewhat slanted news, but that doesn't mean the things that they report are necessarily Plus, wrong. Plus, there were witnesses who had different stories. So I don't know what the truth is, and that's what I've always said about the Ferguson thing. Sure. And, and you know, I, th I think other cases would be a lot easier to prove. I mean, like more recently, there was a gentleman by the name of Eric Garner mm -hmm. who, who was, was uh, right. I, and if I remember correctly, I think it was over untaxed cigarettes. So, That's you correct. know, in a, in a way he was doing what uh, like what Sam Conkin would, would call agorism uh, in, in a way, in a manner of speaking. Uh, you know, that, that, that one was kind of more obvious. And of course, you know, anyone can watch the footage, mm -hmm. you know, of the entire encounter from from start to finish. And I think in a lot of ways what we're kind of looking at is really kind of going back to founding principles, especially in terms of asking the question about whether or not uh, cops are even constitutional. In fact, there was a white paper, a scholarly paper by that was written by one Dr. Roger Roots, 
with that very title, Are Cops Constitutional? It was published in the Seton Hall Constitutional Law Journal back in 2001. And uh, the, the short version is that Dr. Roots found that during the uh, early republic, so this would basically be, you know, uh, early 1800s and thereabouts, uh, there was no such thing as so-called professional government police. And the reason why was because, the reason why was because um, it was an assumption, and this is classical republicanism, the assumption was it was the duty of the average citizen to participate in what would now be referred to as so-called law enforcement, including such things, but not limited to chasing suspects by foot, carriage, or horseback. So, I mean, if you want a rationale for something like open carry, I mean, that's it. You know, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, we don't need a standing army, you know, whether they wear uh, blue costumes or whatever else. I think it's interesting to speculate on what the world would be like if uh, law enforcement uh, or not law enforcement, but protection services were privatized. And I think that this is that's very interesting as far as constitutionality of it goes. At the time of the Constitution's writing, the Constitution only applied to the federal government. So that when you, they say that you have a right to freedom of religion, that only meant that the federal government doesn't have an opinion on that. But in that time in Massachusetts, the state religion was Puritanism, which is now uh, the uh, the Congregationalist uh, Church. And so the in the case, I, I would say that yes, police are um, you know local state. Uh, municipal, county, police, these people are constitutional. Uh, but, I mean, you, you might be an argument against, against the FBI or the federal marshals or something like that. Well, it, well, and you bring up a kind of couple different things. I mean, uh, in terms of what was done during the early republic, it wasn't uh, so-called what would now be considered law enforcement. It wasn't, uh, wasn't a for-profit enterprise. It was, it was more like a uh, what some people would call like mutual aid, kind of like the right, militia sure. system, kind of like the militia system in a sense, um, you know, where it was all very decentralized and so forth, neighbors helping neighbors and all that, uh, including things like committees of safety and so forth. So, uh, and I know, and I know that some people have mentioned about, you know, having as kind of a corollary to that, you know, the privatization, not corporatization, but privatization, real free market provision of security services like uh, Gustave de Molinari, um, Molinari wrote about. Well, the and Pinkertons that, is a pretty good example um, from U.S. history. In the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, the 1800s, the, the Pinkerton Security Agency would be some people that would, you know, provide security for your operation. Yes, of course. And, uh, but, but I think, but in terms of at least getting back to, to f- uh, founding principles and so forth, I think that kind of mutual aid with committees of safety I think is really uh, the best chance. In fact, uh, I think probably one of the things that you guys up there in Keene should seriously consider is uh, putting together a committee of safety right there in Keene. Uh, well, in why fact, don't you come up and do that? That uh, sounds like a neat idea. <laughs> well, I'm down here in Texas, so uh, the situation's a we little... We have uh, roads and airplanes and trains, and they'll all get you at some point or another to New Hampshire. I got my hands full, We get full, told man. all the time we should do this and we should do that. And I spent all my whole hey, day on activism Wait today. a minute. We kind of do this. There's an app called Peacekeeper, of which there are already a few members here in Keene who yeah, that use it. It's a free app. Anyone can point. download it's it. It's free now? It's now free. When did that happen? Last week. And oh, wow. so I didn't you, know can, that you can download this app at peacekeeper.org. You can get it on your Android or your smart uh, on your uh, iPhone and you can build little networks in your home community, whether it's Texas or New Hampshire, wherever. And you can uh, hmm. build little groups, put out an alert if there's an intruder, a fire, an abduction, whatever sort of emergency you need and uh, send out an alert to who you choose. That may not be the police. That may be your neighbor. I am glad to hear about that. And Sleepy Salsa, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, And, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have great ideas for activism, but it's hard to implement a good idea if you don't have people. And And uh, it's also hard to implement a good idea that isn't yours. That's Um, true. You know, I mean, you just don't have the passion for it, the understanding of it, that kind of thing. The Free State Project is a movement of getting 20,000 activists to one place. Liberty-minded activists. It is really tempting 
if you're elsewhere to say, you know, I wish they'd do this or do that. I did that. When I was in Florida, I wanted a particular sort of thing done. I wanted people to be able to purchase mailboxes like we're able to do at the- uh, In New Hampshire. Yeah, in New New Hampshire. And that way they could claim, like for instance, mailboxes at people's houses. Yeah. Like, you know, you keep some mail for people. Right. And they could that way claim New Hampshire as their residence. And the mailbox would forward the mail to- Even if they're, even when they're away from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And that would be really awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. But, and well, it's done. Um, we're doing it here in Keene. Cool. But, um, you know, I mean, that wasn't being done at the time, and mm-hmm. I was I was disappointed, and I understand what it's like to be disappointed. I understand what it's like to wish other people would do certain sort, sort, sorts of activism. But I got to say, sitting on this side of the microphone, I got plenty to do. Thanks. Um, yeah. I really love a little support from people coming here and uh, doing the activism that they're uh, excited about. Whatever you want to do, you can probably do it here in New Hampshire because we already have 1,600 people here as part of the Free State Project, and 16,000 are pledged to make the move in total thus far. We're coming back with more. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Chuck Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream back pain cream at Walgreens. What looks good under your Christmas tree and tastes even better? Big Berkey water filters. Yes, the gift of clean water. A gift that provides a great foundation for achieving good health in the lives of your loved ones. A Big Berkey water filter gives them protection from bacteria, heavy metals, chlorine, fluoride, pesticides and herbicides, VOCs and more. And best of all, a Big Berkey water filter is a gift that lasts for many years with no additional investment. And that saves time and money in filter replacements that other water filters require and are even powerful enough to purify treated, untreated, or even stagnant pond water. As always, all orders over $50 are shipped free, and GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Order online at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com, spelled Big, B-E-R-K-E-Y, WaterFilters.com, or call 877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-B-E-R-K-E-Y. Gift well this Christmas. Give a Big Berkey water filter. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bother to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. 
These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. Freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you dial in right now. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Of course, you can bring up whatever's on your mind. You can get interactive on the website. And if you appreciate what we're doing, then please go to the website at freetalklive.com and share your favorite episode. Uh, for the last week, share that episode on your preferred social networking place, Facebook, Twitter, wherever else it is that people hang out. Pinterest, I guess, is one of the bigger ones uh, right now. So please share whatever you want over from freetalklive.com as we go to your phone calls and thoughts coming up. Derek J. will tell us about not supporting laws you aren't willing to kill to enforce. First, though, we have James in Arizona on Skype. Hello, James. James in Arizona. Derek Gay, we have uh, thousands of laws in the United States of America, and uh, a couple hundred, or maybe f- a couple hundred uh, people are mur- murdered by a cop every year out of the tens of thousands of laws. So I can't wait to hear your stupid story. But speaking of integrity. Go ahead. That's two laughs. You're doing great, man. Keep going. You're cracking me up. I could do it all night if you keep me on, if you actually live up to your show's name. But that is a little bit too much. You're going to have to move to New Hampshire if you want to be a co host. Go ahead. Oh, you don't want me to do that. No, I can guarantee I definitely you that don't. because by the time I, <laughs> He's just I'll teasing. give it 40 days and 40 nights before all of you guys move. <laughs> oh, you're saying that if you moved to New Hampshire, it would take less than a month and a half before we all left? There's a light bulb going off in your little brain. <laughs> it's on. It's on Stoner Dam. Right. Speaking yeah, we've got a, we've got dozens Martha. of people here in Keene who are on an active hate campaign against the liberty activists here, and I don't think anyone's call- moved out. Yeah, they're they're not me, by the way. They're not under what, would you do differently? what would you, you, you do call, differently you can, to discourage us? You can call your detractors haters all you want, uh, Ian. Uh, people that don't respect you uh, have re- good reason to not respect you. No, um, I call them haters anyway, because they, like to, they actually express hatred. I should like hatred. to say something about your integrity and about, uh, by mm. the way, about uh, Sweet Salsa, whoever he was, they just called. The people that uh, said – that Michael Brown had had his hands up and then his back to the cops, lied to the grand jury. And the forensic evidence and the other people that saw it too, saw what happened, told the truth. So, uh, no, but no wonder they had lived in a town where people would actually smash windows and burn down businesses. There's a lot of disgusting people in this world. Uh, some of them are cops, but a lot of them aren't. Uh, I didn't see any cops smashing windows and burning down buildings in Ferguson, did you? How do you know they, were, they weren't cops? Oh right, of course I don't. I don't, and I also don't believe in agent provocateurs either, because I don't. Well, then you're just ignoring the evidence. There's some pretty good evidence for agent provocateurs in Kent State. um, I didn't say there never were. I didn't ever say there isn't. Okay, you said you don't believe in them. Hitler, Hitler was an agent provocateur, Mark. As huh? you, if you, I assume you know your history. And I'm, by the way, you got me flat footed on that one. I'm sorry. What does it mean to say Hitler is an agent provocateur? Hiller. Hiller. Oh, hi- who? He caught me flat-footed. Who's I don't know Hitler? the answer. I thought you said Hitler. What did you say? I did oh. say Hitler was an agent provocateur. And why is uh, that? That's that's how he joined the national. Uh, he did. Party. He wasn't a national uh, socialist. He didn't. He did not may, uh, uh, ascribe to their tenets of belief. Hmm. May I? May I go on, please? I just want to say one more thing that I didn't get to say yesterday. Just one uh, more. Wow. All Twenty-four, right. twenty-four hundred people murdered by the evil. Empire of Japan, uh, those guys, those uh, flyboys, the Japanese flyboys that toasted to Saki at sunrise on an aircraft carrier and then flew a couple hundred miles, didn't do it. Didn't do it because they were duped by the United States government, and they sure as heck didn't do it because uh, of a military-industrial complex that was budding and wanted to get wanted a, a Franklin Delano Roosevelt to declare war or dupe Japan into something that they'd already been up to for the previous uh, 10 years. They invaded Manchuria in 1931 and murdered 300,000 people in one old town by chopping to death their men and raping their women before they chopped them to death. So uh, how we ended that war, I'd much rather be incinerated than uh, be chopped to death and watch my old lady raped. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks for the call. 
855 450 free. I did not end that war. I just like to say he said how we ended it. I think he was referring to the dropping of uh, the, bombs the bombs on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. Right. Uh, I was not involved in that. I take no responsibility, and I find that to be horrifying. Yeah, that horrified people for decades to come because uh, there were generations of people who were afraid that we were constantly living on the brink of nuclear war. Oh, also, I mean, the rape of the rape of Nanking uh, was was a horrifying experience. I'm not gonna, I wouldn't belittle that either. So let's move on. Uh, Derek J, you have a story. It's not gonna fit into uh, the end of the show completely, but worth starting. Yeah, one of our callers earlier brought up Eric Garner, the man in New York who was murdered. By an uh, well, murder is a legal term. Mm-hmm. And he was he was definitely he was killed. Strangled. He was strangled by a police officer. It was homicide, and, and it was ruled a homicide, um, which but, has a different definition. Right, it means that, that, intentionally I, I say, killing another person. I would say that that is the least um, interesting piece of evidence in the Eric Garner case. The ruling of the homicide. It's you know this is trotted out by people that don't understand what homicide means. Mm-hmm. Um, homicide is you know it was homicide. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, a that's one of five uh, person definitions. Person killed another person, and it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't sort of accidental. Right. In an autopsy, it could be accidental, suicide, homicide, um, it, and a couple other distinctions. But either right. way, there's a man who wrote an article at Bloomberg.com named Stephen L. Carter. He's a Yale Law School professor, and he writes, on the opening day of law school, I always counsel my first-year students never to support a law they are not willing to kill to enforce. Hmm. I usually, uh, usually they greet this advice with something between skepticism and puzzlement until I remind them that the police go armed to enforce the will of the state. And if you resist, they might kill you. I wish this caution were only theoretical. It isn't. Whatever your view on the refusal of a New York City grand jury to indict the police officer whose chokehold apparently led to the death of Eric Garner, it's useful to remember the crime that Garner is alleged to have committed. He was selling individual cigarettes, or Lucy's, in violation of New York law. The obvious racial dynamics of the case, the police officer is white, Garner was black, that spurred outrage, but... At least among libertarians, so has the law that was being enforced. Nick Gillespie wrote in the Daily Beast, quote, Clearly something has gone horribly wrong when a man lies dead after being confronted for selling cigarettes to willing buyers. And after he'd been given just tickets for this behavior in the past, you know. He probably had no reason to expect that his death was imminent. Yeah, he just didn't, he didn't want to go to jail, that's for sure. Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky also blamed the statute. Quote, Some politician put a tax of $5.85 on a pack of cigarettes, so they've driven cigarettes underground by making them so expensive. The problem is actually broader. It's not just cigarette tax laws that can lead to the death of those police seek to arrest. It's every law. Libertarians argue that we have far too many laws and that Garner case offers evidence that they're right. I often tell my students that there will never be a perfect technology of law enforcement and that there's it's unavoidable that there will be situations where police err on the side of too much violence rather than too little. Better training won't lead to perfection, but fewer laws would mean fewer opportunities for official violence. To get out of hand. What kind of training really do police need? I love the training thing. Let's train them some more. We really, I mean, what, well, do you think de-escalation is would be useful training? It, they get all kinds of de-escalation training. That's what we've been told by law enforcement officers here on the air. They get that training. We don't see a lot of evidence that de- what they get is they get on the job training that says escalation mm-hmm. is the way to go. I mean, are you going to spend more than 50% of their time in training? I don't think that's what it is. We have an, a culture uh, in, in law enforcement in this country that it's that, that force is the preferable thing to do. There's a, there's a guy out in, I think it's California, a police officer that's facing being fired for trying to de-escalate a situation rather than using more violence. I mean, there, we've had police chiefs say, I su- uh, you know, I would uh, fire a police officer who didn't shoot in this situation or that situation. And that was actually a situation where a police officer didn't shoot. So 
we've got from the top down a culture of escalation in the area of violence in law enforcement in this country. Well, and not to mention that all humans uh, respond to incentives. And if there are no incentives for these police to be held accountable for their criminal actions or for harming another individual, they're more likely to do it. Well, federal law alone includes more than 3,000 crimes, fewer than half of which are found in the federal criminal code. The rest are scattered throughout statutes. Hmm. And a citizen who wants to abide by the law has no quick and easy way to find out what the law actually is. (laughs) no kidding. Not to mention, nobody even knows the number for sure. Sure, and if you were to even find out, you know, what the law is, then you have to find out what the interpretations of the law are, and every, you know, lawyer and every court justice... Sure, you put 10 lawyers, you'll get 15 interpretations. Yeah, and every cop has a different interpretation. So, we're out of time for tonight, but we'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, we'll post that full article on our Facebook page here in moments. This has been Free Talk Live. DVD. Free Talk Live. Who is playing dress up as a g- guess? Um, superhero. Ninja. Ah, uh, yeah. A border ninja. <laughs> See, that would be the problem. Somebody else would dress up like a pirate, and then there would be a war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the pirates duking it out. <laughs> Wait, well, now what do the pirates have against ninjas? Oh, ninjas and pirates are like matter and antimatter. They can't be together. It- <laughs> Okay. I have he a was feeling gonna... the ninjas would just whoop it up on the pirates. Man. Are you kidding? Pirates. Arr. Pirates, man. <laughs> oh, the pirates do have cannons. They have the long range attack ability, but once you get in close, it's hard <laughs> to be tougher than a pirate, though. The pirates are certainly tough, but the agility I don't think is there. Lose, a, around on lose a, a hand, there. lose a leg, you can <laughs> still get still 200 fight. people to be afraid of you as you stomp <laughs> around with half of your, you know, an eye patch, one hand, one leg. You stomp <laughs> around a half a person, and you're still commanding 200 people. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,192, silver around $16.28, and Bitcoin is trading around $373. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Bee is sponsored by eFoods Direct, redefining the way you think about storable food. Visit eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bee or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Bee to receive a 10% off listener discount on your next purchase. In the news, on Sunday, former CIA Director Michael Hayden claimed the CIA never lied about his torture program, as alleged by Senate Democrats. Hayden appeared on CBS's Face the Nation, claiming that waterboarding was no longer used when he served under the last years of the Bush administration. Hayden's statements come as the Senate Intelligence Committee prepares to release its report on the CIA's use of torture techniques. The report is expected to find that the CIA went beyond the law and lied to the White House, Congress, the Department of Justice, and the agency itself. 
Chicago activists believe they have proof of the local police using Stingray technology to monitor their phone conversations at protests. A video released Friday by hacktivist group Anonymous claims that audio of a phone conversation between officers shows them discussing using cell phone monitoring tools on organizers. At one point, the officers can be heard discussing a woman who is on the phone, asking the other officer whether or not they were picking up any information on where the protest was headed. Activists also posted pictures of a vehicle they believe may have been using some type of signal disruption technology. Indigenous activists in New Hazleton, British Columbia, closed down Highway 16 Saturday to protest recent approvals for two natural gas pipelines. The pipelines would run through Getson territory. The local chiefs say the projects threaten the salmon population and the community's livelihood. The Liberty Bee is sponsored in part by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your message or product? The Liberty Bee is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To inquire further, visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Police fired tear gas at hundreds of protesters in Oakland, California, after it was alleged that explosives were thrown at highway patrol officers Sunday night. Meanwhile, the Oakland Tribune reports that at least three police officers and a technician were injured and six arrests made Sunday night in Berkeley, California, as a result of similar protests calling for police reforms. On Sunday, Mexico's Attorney General Jesus Murillo stated that evidence confirmed that 43 student teachers were incinerated at a garbage dump by gang members. Murillo stated that Austrian experts tested a bone fragment from a bag of ash that was found and found a match for one of the students. The Argentine forensic anthropology team also helped with the forensics and cautioned that the search for the missing should continue because of a lack of sufficient evidence. These students have been missing since September 26 from Aguala, Mexico. Over the weekend, six men were transferred from the military prison in Guantanamo Bay to Uruguay to be resettled as refugees. The men were held for more than 12 years, but never charged. The deal was negotiated by the Pentagon and the government of Uruguay. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers criticized the transfer, saying that foreign governments are often ill-equipped to monitor the former prisoners. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Marjorie Wildcraft's Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Comedy-minded, but liberty-focused. Corey and his guest hosts tackle the topics of the day from a liberty perspective. The Corey Moore Show. Catch it live each Friday night at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, December 8th, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Shortly after posting for the 10,000th time on his Twitter account earlier today, despite only ever accumulating 15 followers, local man Aaron Gartner announced he's about ready to quit the popular microblogging site. Well, I opened my account about two years ago and tweeted pretty much every day since.